A Google Form link will be posted on our Zoom chat box, YouTube live comments, and YouTube video description towards the end of the webinar. Please make sure that you enter the correct information, especially your email address, to ensure receipt of the certificate. Also, for you to obtain the certificate, you will need to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow our page on Facebook. Please note that we receive hundreds of requests and it takes around seven days or so to process all the certificates. If you do not receive your certificate after a week, please feel free to send us a message on Facebook or email us at philsihub at gmail.com. So again, welcome po sa Philsci Hub. Welcome to all our Zoom participants and our YouTube live viewers. For those who are new and may not be familiar with who we are and what we do, allow me to share our mission and vision in the next few minutes. Filipino Science Hub is an online platform founded by our CEO, Filipino scientist, Dr. Jeffrey Camacho Bunkin, back in 2012. Currently, we are a registered nonprofit organization based in Houston, Texas, United States. Our mission is to promote STEM education and the culture of research among students and teachers in the Philippines and abroad. Our current global leadership team is comprised of volunteer Filipino scientists and seasoned STEM educators from different parts of the world. Our vision is to see a technology and innovation-driven Philippines, and we believe that this can be achieved by creating a new generation of well-rounded Filipino STEM enthusiasts. This vision is being carried out by our two major programs, the Philsci Hub Ed Program and Philsci Hub Research University. Through Philsci Hub Ed, we are able to empower and support our teachers when it comes to strengthening STEM fundamentals education. We believe that this is important because the more equipped our STEM educators are, the more they can inspire our students to pursue a career in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Through this program, we have been able to serve our teachers by creating STEM teaching modules as well as conducting teachers training webinars, all of which are accessible on our website for free. So we have also been able to collaborate with major educational organizations that have the same goals and advocacies as Filipino Science Hub. Through these partnerships, we have been able to further expand our reach and help more students and teachers, especially during the time of pandemic. So together, everybody achieves more. The other major program that drives our vision forward is Philsci Hub Research University. We believe that in order to strengthen a STEM culture, students also need to be able to learn how to conduct a scientific research. As we know, many scientific and technological breakthroughs happened through research. And we would like to equip our younger generation by providing them proper scientific research training so we can start them young. Here at Philsci Hub Research University, we provide free courses on fundamentals of scientific research, such as research ideation, literature review, how to write a research proposal, how to communicate your research work to the scientific community, among other courses. Through this program, we are also able to bring practicing scientists closer to the STEM educational sector. So because of this closer contact, our students become more aware of the possible STEM career paths available for them and how these careers contribute to the advancement of the society around them. So up to date, we have been able to reach over 70,000 students and teachers all over the world. And we know that this will continue to grow in the years to come. And this is why we are all very excited on what is in store here at Bills I Hope. Our official website is www.fieldsidehub.com. This is where you can access all our materials such as webinars, tutorials, modules, virtual lab, and special features. We are also present in several social media platforms such as Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and TikTok. 
So follow us wherever you are most active on to get updated with our web events. So again, thank you for being with us this morning. And to officially start our webinar, I would like to turn the virtual floor over to our host for today. Magandang umaga po ulit sa ating lahat. Um, I'm your host for this morning. So, um, bago po natin uh, sumulan ng ating webinar, um, I will, I will uh, let Dr. Jeffrey Bunkin share more details about this collaboration between uh, FUSE, PNU, and Fieldsite Hub. So, Dr. Jeffrey. All right, magandang uh, umaga po sa inyong lahat. Muli ako po si Jeffrey Bunkin, ang founder ng Filipino Science Hub. Teka, para hindi ko masasabi. Um, all right, so nakikita niyo na po yung screen that I'm sharing. Hello? Yes, sir. Nakikita niyo na po yung screen. Okay. okay. Yes, po. Yes, sir. Welcome po. Uh, sa yes, sir. Um, Okay, so me, ako po ang si Jeffrey Bunkin, ang founder ng um, Filipino Science Hub. So, uh, sa, bago po tayo pumunta talaga sa uh, pinakatampok na parte ng araw na ito, which is the webinar by um, our guest speaker, so um, gusto ko lang po mag-share sa inyo uh, ng uh, information kung uh, ano po ba itong program na ito. So, ito pong webinar na ito is part of um, a collaboration project among three um, organizations in the Philippines. So first, the Foundation for the Upgrading of the Standard of Education, which is uh, uh, an education foundation under the Lusitan Group of uh, Companies. The second one, the part of the collaboration, ito is Philippine or Normal University, and then the third one is the Philippine Science Hub, where I am a part of it. So this training program, this for our teachers, is a way to elevate the quality of STEM teaching in the Philippines. And so, how do we do this? So we have two different components here in our training program. Ito. So, ang una po ay ang pag-deliver ng training courses um, when it comes to pedagogy or specifically STEM pedagogy. Ano po ba yung mga best practices um, uh, na pwede nating um, maibahagi sa ating mga guro, lalong-lalo na ngayon sa panahon ng, ng pagtuturo during the pandemic. Ang pangalanong pong component nito ay um, innovative and practical um, strategies when it comes to when it comes to teaching stem so ito naman po ay mga content or mga pagbabahagi na nanggaling po mismo sa mga filipino scientists and educators um from different parts of the world so ito pong pagsasamang ito itong balance ng pedagogy at ng innovative strategies sa pagtuturo ng stem ang bago pong formula na aming inihahandog sa inyo para kumbaga mas uh, ma-enhance po natin ang paraan ng pagtuturo at pagkatuto ng stem sa ating uh, bansa Okay, so dito po nakapaloob sa bawat uh, component po ay tig aapat na webinar um, offerings. So, ang una po under our pedagogical uh, training courses, um, noon pong August 24, si Sir, si Professor e. Brando Palomar po of Philippine Normal University, he talked about the underpinnings of STEM teaching. It was followed by a webinar by Professor Sheila Sia, also from Philippine Normal University. So on August 30th of this year, she talked about you know strategies on how to create modules. For today, po, we are graced by uh, the presence of Professor Chris John Mejia Pastor, and he'll talk about you know how to deliver virtual lectures. So sobrang napapanahon po. And then pangapat naman, um, end of the month po, se September 30th. Um, uh, Professor Alphonse Jason Talgone will talk about uh, strategies on how to uh, assess yun pong ating um, STEM um, teaching. And then, on the side naman po, ng innovative and practical STEM um, uh, teaching strategies, medyo mas maaga po kami nagsimula dito. On May 22 po of, of this year, a uh, um, uh, panel of eight Filipino scientists delivered a talk focused on the importance of effective STEM teaching. So ito po, bakit ba? It, like, bakit ba mahalaga talaga maayos ang pagtuturo ng STEM sa ating bansa? Uh, pangalawa naman po, on June 26, um, Professor Dindy Voiles and Professor Michelle Lansigan delivered a lecture on about uh, practical and innovative STEM teaching strategies. Um, on July 31st po, na-deliver na rin po natin yung 
uh, lecture on design of laboratory experiments and virtual labs. So that was delivered by Professor May John Aguila of UPLB, uh, Dr. Chester Dabalos from the University of Hawaii in Hilo, and then Marty Mateo from the Institute of Plant Breeding. And then at the end of October naman po, ito yung culmination uh, uh, event natin. So uh, Mr. J.P. Onya and Dr. Annalet Lopez will deliver um, a short lecture on the fundamentals of research teaching both at the um, elementary and high school level. So end of the month po yan, October at 31st. So para po sa inyo na babago pa lang po dito sa ating program na ito, baka po nag-wonder kayo, ay tapos na pala yung iba. So all of these uh, webinars or were recorded and uploaded on Filipino Science Hub's uh, YouTube channel. So um, you would still be eligible to uh, take the course. Panoorin niyo po yun. And then also within the same um, upload, nandun po sa comment section yun pong um, link kung paano po kayo makakapag uh, uh, sagot ng evaluation form and paano po kayo makakakuha pa rin ng certificate of participation. So one very important aspect po of this um, training um, um, series that, that we're offering is we're working on um, getting this accredited para po mabigyan natin ng um, CPD units yung mga guro na magtitake nitong webinar series na ito. And so we'll keep you posted po as soon as that gets approved. So yun po, so uh, meron, bukod po, so ito po ang kumbaga pang anim na minahandog. Yung pang pito po is gonna be on September 30th and then yung pang walo po is gonna be on October 31st. And then Balikan nyo lang po dun sa aming YouTube channel kung ano po yung mga na-miss nyo na mga naunang courses para po makompleto ninyo yung walong training courses. Okay, so muli, ito pong program nito is brought to you by the Foundation for the Upgrading of, of the Standard of Education in the Philippines, um, Philippine Normal University, and Filipino Science Hub. Okay, now, so at this point, I would like to um, um, hand over the floor to uh, Dr. Dindy Voiles. Thank you, Dr. Jeff. So... Uh, isa pong karangalan uh, to introduce our webinar speaker for this morning, Professor Chris John Maya Pastor. So Mr. Pastor is a full-time instructor in the College of Graduate Studies and Teacher Education Research and an adjunct faculty of the Faculty of Science, Technology, and Mathematics of Philippine Normal University. He finished his Bachelor of Science in Chemistry for teachers at the Philippine Normal University and obtained his straight Master of Science and Doctor of Philosophy in Biochemistry degree at the University of the Philippines in Manila, 2017. Mr. Chris Van Pastor has served as a trainer in the national training of teachers of the K-12 curriculum spearheaded by the National Institute for Science and Mathematics. University of the Philippines, Diliman, in partnership with the Department of Education. In the field of biochemistry, Mr. Pastor's main lines of interest include genomics, proteomics, and bioinformatics. His dissertation focused on mutation profiling and gene expression analysis of drug susceptible and resistant mycobacterium tuberculosis in collaboration with the Lung Center of the Philippines and the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology at the University of the Philippines, Manila. His graduate studies and dissertation were funded by the Accelerated Science and Technology Human Resource Development Program through the Philippine Council for Health, Research and Development, Department of Science and Technology, wherein he's the pioneer graduate of straight MSPhD in biochemistry program. He served as a resource speaker in numerous seminars, workshops, and conferences on pedagogy and contextualization in science education. He also delivers lectures through the Philippine Society of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, wherein teachers, researchers, and scientists are equipped with pedagogical strategies in teaching biochemistry and molecular biology in secondary and Tertiary, tertiary levels. So let us all welcome po Professor Christian Pastor. So sir, take it away po. Sir, magandang umaga po. So to all of our organizers uh, for this event, uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me uh, in this uh, in this uh, 
webinar. So I think we can now start. You know? So can you hear me? Yes, po, sir. Salamat po for the response. Yes, so let sir. Me yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much for your response. So I hope that everybody will uh, will participate in our uh, uh, short activities for today so that uh, we can somehow uh, deliver this uh, this webinar ng maayos. Ano? So let me just uh, share my slide first. So can you see my PowerPoint presentation now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So thank you very much. Yes, sir. Hello. Thank you. So the topic at hand is uh, how to deliver a uh, virtual lecture. So we not, we know that uh, because of the pandemic, uh, all of us are actually forced to uh, move and uh, have a transition from face-to-face -face, uh, classes into uh, we have uh, remote uh, re remote teaching and learning uh, environments. And uh, it is not only the Philippines, of course. Uh, there are so many countries, almost all of the countries are actually having uh, remote classes right now. Some of them have already returned to this phase as, as we know it. But uh, here in the Philippines, I think uh, it would be <laughs> maybe not for this. So uh, this would be well for everybody or important for us to uh, consider the different practices and uh, guidelines and some tips that we have to uh, practice or do whenever we are delivering uh, virtual lectures. So before we start, uh, let us first have a certain sort of mental gymnastics. So all you have to do is to uh, put your responses or type in your responses in the chat, chat box. Okay, so my first question is uh, for you, how many human faces do you see in the figure? How many human faces do you see in the figure? So we have two, two faces. Okay, so so far I, I cannot see any other uh, number here or response aside from two. Okay, so last five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, okay, so, oh, there is an answer there, like four. Okay, sige. so let's answer the, you know, the question. So there are actually two human faces in this picture. So there is a picture of an old woman here. So this is her, her nose and this is her chin, right? And then this, this is, uh, there is another picture here or a part of a picture, which is the uh, young woman here. Or yeah, this one. So this is her nose naman. Diba? Nakita niyo po ba yun? Okay, sige. So, para po dun sa mga ano, nakakita ng four, so I hope that <laughs> uh, nyo nakita yung, ano, no, yung other two na uh, uh, faces, no? <laughs> faces, actually human faces. <laughs> okay, and then uh, we have uh, another question is, uh, do you see other, a picture of another living thing in this, ano, in this uh, illustration? This is actually an optical illusion, right? So aside from the uh, two faces, is there any picture of uh, another uh, living thing here? So may nakakita ng cat, okay? <laughs> may nakakita ng lizard, okay? Or some of them are actually seeing a cat, okay? So there's a cat actually here on the top, right? So on the hat of those uh, of the old woman and the young lady, there's actually a cat. So. Thank you very much for your participation. Let's now proceed to the next question. Can you answer this riddle? So pronounced as one letter, but written with three, only two different letters are used to make me. I'm double, I'm single, I'm black, blue, and gray. I'm red from both ends and the same either way. So whenever there's a word that you can read from left to right, right to left, and they end the same, we call them, in English, we call them palindromes, right? So in science, we also have some palindromes. For example, in the uh, sequences of the DNA, if you have some sequences, you can read them uh, from left to right, right to left, they end the same. They are palindromic sequences. So what is your answer? So only three, four. Okay, so their answer, last five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so the answer is an I. Okay, thank you very much. So the answer is an I. So you see, you know, when you when you read it from left to right, right to left, it ends the same. Okay, let's proceed now to the next question. Uh, well, this one is quite tricky. How many black dots do you see? 
in the figure. Ilang black dots ang nakikita ninyo? Ayan, okay. According to some of you, Sherwin says none. Okay. None. Adrian, none. Abigail, okay. Others others could see four. Okay. Oh, yung isa. No, no, none. Yung iba. Several. Okay. So some of uh, there are some answers here saying several. Okay. For those people who are saying none, none, uh, let me just dissect the question first. Do you see a black dot? Do you see black dots there in the figure? Yes, di ba? O sige. So ngayon, may follow-up question ako. So if you can see black dots, then go. let's go back to the original question. Uh, can, can you really count them? Okay, some of them are saying the black dots are actually moving. Okay, actually alam nyo ba, no? they said, no, research would say that the more black dots that you see there, the more stressed you are. The more stressed you are. Pero actually, hindi totoo yun. Okay, huwag kayo maniwala doon. Kasi totoo, ang actually yan, ang sinasabi nila, no, what they commonly say is, when people would, uh, when you open your ano, your sentence or whatsoever, no, claim mo na uh, study says, research says, most of the people would believe. no. So actually, it is not because of your stress. It is because of the accommodation of your eye. So it's, it suggests that whenever you focus on one portion or part of the figure, that appears brighter than the rest. So, itry nga natin kung ano ang ano nito, kung totoo yon Again, so because of your eyes, you are being tricked by your eyes and your eyes uh, is capable of what you call accommodation. When you focus your uh, your uh, sight on one portion of the figure, it will be, uh, or it will appear brighter. So, can you see my cursor pala? Can I ask? Uh, can you see the cursor? In my, ano? Uh, in my yes, cursor? sir. Yes. Okay, sige. So, I will point to a certain you know, part of the figure. Sige nga, so anong color ito? Is it white or actually magagalit yung physics no? kasi daw white and black di color. So, ano ka uh, disappear? Is it white or black? White. 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 white, white. Okay, let's go to another another uh, dot here. How about this one? White. 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 It's white, white sir. Kapag nakafocus ka no, sa isang bagay, Talagang ano no parang all of your attention is there and uh, somehow no mas ano yan no, uh, well in this figure brighter siya than the rest and also i think it also applies to ano no parang uh, when when for example when you're teaching no when you direct the focus or attention of your students on the most essential things of course ganun din sila no parang nadadirect din sila pero hindi naman accommodation ang tawag natin doon syempre it's more of ano lang no directing them to whichever or where, where should they go or what what should they consider okay sige po. so thank you very much let's proceed now to the next uh, slide so it says here actually there's no black dot at all you are being tricked by your uh, by your eyes okay so hindi ka stressed wag maniwala na stress no kasi ang aga-aga pa hindi pa pwedeng stress kayo <laughs> well ako nagsabi okay next question can you answer this simple question as fast as you can are you ready So I'll flash the questions three, or the question three, two, one. Mary's father has five daughters. Nana, nanny, nini, and nonny. What is the name of the fifth daughter? Last five cents. So it's a good question, Patricia. Mary, Dow. Mary, may sumagot ba na Nunu dyan? Oh, kasi baka naghahanap ng pattern na, no? So, A-E-I-O-U, ah. So, yung mga sumagot ng Nunu, o oh, hindi yung kapatid ni Mary, no? So, when you analyze the stem of the question, so it says here that Mary's father has five daughters. It is actually empirical for students and for people to look for patterns, no? Yun yung ano natin. Uh, nagiging problem natin siya sometimes in instruction because they are more focused on the pattern rather than what we are teaching. So na nami-mislead sila minsan nung mga ano nila no, nung mga iniisip nila. So we have to ano no be careful with uh, sa mga ganito. It also has something to ano no parang it had also plays a certain effect on for example yung sa mga examinations no pag nakakita ka ng ano ng exam, nakakita ka ng item no feeling mo na encounter mo na siya before, nagiging ano ka no careless ka. Hindi mo na siya binabasa kasi na feeling mo alam mo na yung alam mo naman yung susunod na mga ano ng mga events no alam mo rin ng support okay sige so i think i have the I, i'll give you the last one so let us now have some mathematics naman okay 
So, wala mo nang sasagot. Do not type your answer unless I tell you to do so. Okay? Again, uh, do not type your answer until or unless I tell you to do so. Mental math. Take 1,000 and add 40. Add another 1,000. Add 30. Add 1,000. Add 20. Add 1,000. Add 10. What's your answer? 500. 4,100. 5,000. 3, 2. Aba, magkakaiba kayo na sagot. Ano? Okay. 5,000. 4, 9, 10. <laughs> okay. So all you need to do is to add all of these numbers, right? Oh, 2, two 1. Okay. May naka 2, 1. Ano? So 4, 4, 1. Okay. Sige. So last 5 seconds. Uh, 5. Before I reveal the answer. 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Sige po. So iba-iba ang kanilang sagot. So all you need to do is to add these numbers and actually when you answer 5,000, 5,000, may sumagot ng 5,000, ano? maraming sumagot ng 5,000, o kaya lang po, mali po yun. Okay, the, the correct answer is uh, 4,100 only. Um, so congratulations po sa mga sumagot ng uh, 4,000. Uh, 100. Okay, so paano po natin nakita, nakuha yan? So I, I'm going to play the same content of the slide. no? So And then 40 plus 30 will uh, give you 70. Then 70. Then uh, this is 30. no? So 4,100. Okay. So saan kaya nakuha yung 900 na sobra? Nagkamali kayo sa pag-carry no? nung, nung uh, number. So mentally, na-carry nyo yan sa thousands place instead, uh, instead of the hundreds place. Kaya kayo nagkaroon ng uh, ganung answer. Okay. So... For those who answered 4-1 or 4,100, uh, congratulations to you. Okay, sige po. So I think that's enough. No? So let me just uh, move on to the, uh, uh, the topic that we have uh, for today. How to deliver a virtual, uh, virtual lecture. And actually not only a lecture, but virtual activities in general. Okay, So because when we are teaching science, of course we know that... Uh, necessary uh, deliver uh, lectures, okay. di ba? No? Uh, I think you go, uh, sir. So, maybe... Alam, wala uh, na. Eh. Maybe uh, kindly request all our participants... Hindi, mamaya to, na. Mamaya, ilang ga? <laughs> to mute po, no, while uh, Professor Chris is delivering his lecture para mas maintindihan po natin lahat. So, okay. thank, you, thank you po. Maraming salamat po. Ayan. Okay, so I think uh, we can proceed. Mang Dindi, maraming salamat po. So now we proceed to our uh, ano, uh, lecture. So ang sinasabi nga natin, uh, so this is more of a sharing rather than a lecture on how to deliver a virtual lecture. Aside from that, it might encompass not only lecturing. Kasi sa atin naman, when we are teaching science, of course, uh, we, we are constructing activities, designing activities for our students to enjoy. And uh, we have this idea that when we deliver just a plain lecture, syempre, ano rin yun, ano, parang... Uh, hindi rin yun masyadong okay sa mga bata. No? So we will just have to uh, provide some considerations later. And uh, why do I have to uh, tell those things? So let me present the outline of discussion. So I will uh, focus on number one, uh, some preliminary concepts in uh, online teaching. No? So when you're teaching online, so what are the things that uh, we have to consider? Because uh, online teaching is somehow the same as face-to-face. -face. The platform is just different. But there are some practices in the face-to-face -face teaching that we really cannot uh, apply no sa ating uh, online teaching so we have to ano, we have to be very uh, careful uh, when we are considering those things number 2 is uh, how do we treat our students when they are in an online class so yun yung another thing that we have to consider because during the time that we have a face to face discussion of course the, uh, the body language and everything ano so nakikita nyo, nababantayan nyo yung mga bata, especially when uh, they are performing laboratory activities, you can monitor them. This time, if they turn their uh, videos off, then you cannot see them anymore. So that's that's something. No? So parang uh, whenever a student uh, refuses to answer your question, 
during the face to face uh, pwede ka pang mag-deliver ng mga non-verbal communications di ba tama ba para lang ma- ano mo siya mapilit mo siyang sumagot but this time uh, mas mahirap siya gawin kasi nga pag naka-off ng video nila or they said na i have a poor communi- uh, ano internet connectivity then that's the end of the story then the third one is uh, what are the different considerations when we prepare our lesson or plan our lesson for virtual lectures Okay, and uh, how to construct virtual activities. And then uh, the fourth is uh, some things to remember naman when we are teaching. Na, no? So the, the third is more on preparation and the fourth one will be on uh, the actual delivery of your lesson. And then the fifth uh, is uh, after all of those things, of course, we as teachers should also improve ourselves in terms of our practice, reflect on what we are doing and uh, share what uh, we did to others, no? to our co-teachers. So... Uh, tips naman for teachers who handle uh, virtual classes. So let's proceed to the first one. So what are the different uh, preliminaries? Well, we have to put uh, things in context that we know already that the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the landscape uh, landscape of our educational system. So aside from uh, aside from um, causing us to have this remote uh, emergency remote teaching, di ba? Parang, syempre, the situations are more difficult right now. Especially, most of our students are actually, ano rin, no? parang, um, instead of, uh, in a, uh, instead of uh, learning in a classroom wherein you can control the environment, no, yung learning environment, uh, they are now in their homes. So, kung ano yan, kung uh, whatever is the situation at their home, uh, that affects their, ano, their learning. So, that's that's another problem that we have. Aside from that, of course, we, uh, it is really inevitable that uh, we can, and uh, somehow, I'm sure that some of you uh, has experienced na rin yung, ano, no, yung uh, mga estudyante natin mismo, nagkakaroon, they contract the virus, no, they develop the disease, and uh, some of them naman, their loved ones. So, it's really traumatic for them, and it affects learning as well. So, uh, it really changed the landscape of educational system. It pushed the uh, the institutions to develop their ICTs, to uh, to use their LMS that maybe they ignored a long time ago. They do not use that long time ago. Pero ngayon, uh, an, instit- an educational institution should have that. So these are the things that uh, more or less we could we could say as of the moment. And uh, it really affected the different courses and subjects being offered in school. But syempre, ang science ang pinaka-affected dito because we are offering laboratory. No, So it's not only science, it's not only confined to science because, for example, yung mga nagtuturo ng PE, ayan, mahirap din naman magturo ng physical education right now simply because uh, they are not uh, they are not uh, together. No, mahirap maglaro ng mga group games. Paano yun? Paano mo gagawin yun? Eh? Ano ka naka online ka? Something like that, no? But uh, as you can see, no, dito sa atin sa chemistry, ang problem natin is the development of skills. So yun naman ang concern natin. That uh, we, I'm, I am personally worried because uh, some of our students uh, might graduate. Uh, we're in uh, they they might lack some uh, some uh, skills in the laboratory simply because of this pandemic okay so lectures we can uh, actually pwede yung itawid dito no so lectures we can do something about it because the online platform is there uh, what we are doing our best to simulate things for the laboratory but of course simulations are not that uh, no no parang they could be effective but not as uh, well, not as effective and uh, uh, as compared to a first-hand experience in the laboratory. Okay, so this figure will somehow summarize everything. Now, when you are considering the ap- uh, applicability of uh, some terms, kasi before parang naging ano buzzword yung online learning, no online teaching. Uh, hindi pa tayo siguro nandoon sa online learning and teaching. Uh, on its pure form, of course, because uh, pag sinabi po natin kasing online uh, learning or t- uh, learning, dapat ano yun, 80% or pataas ay online. Okay? So, but we have to look at the spectrum in terms of uh, the different learning environments and experiences that our students uh, get. So, meron tayong traditional na learning, this is face-to-face, and uh, during that time, syempre, wala pa it wala pang ano to no incorporation of uh, the the ICT technology we are using traditional methods to teach them uh, we also have what you call web facilitated so may mga times na you can use some resources from the web 1 to 29% lang yan of the time 
uh, well facilitated lang yan. Now, uh, between 30 to 79 percent is called blended learning. Blended learning and then uh, sa ngayon meron tayo sanang uh, online pero we actually call it emergency remote learning. Why? Because most of the time what we're doing is uh, what our system is actually well suited for a face-to-face -face modality of teaching. Pero uh, because of this pandemic, nilagay natin siya sa another platform or uh, modality which is uh, online. So we have synchronous and asynchronous. But that is not 80% and above no, pagdating sa online exposure. That's why it's just a remote uh, emergency remote learning. So, and then uh, some of our students might uh, be in this offline mode. No, yung mga ano na to, radio. No, some of the provinces uh, in the Philippines are actually doing this. No, television, radio. But uh, of course, the exchange of communication and uh, information is uh, quite limited. So, what are the things that we have to consider? Number one, they mentioned that online learning, or well, what we are having right now, is actually effective. No, effective naman siya in the de uh, in delivering content, in delivering uh, in developing some concepts. Maybe I I think what I mentioned before is a uh, major problem natin yung sa skills. No, and then uh, probably it's more effective than the current pandemic uh, in the current pandemic situation. Uh, hindi lang siguro tayo sanay, no? but uh, as time uh, goes by, uh, most of our students are getting used to this kind of platform. No? So that's it. Uh, when you compare it with traditional learning, of course, the diversity of the learning resources and teaching materials that we can use uh, is quite ano naman dito. No? Parang mas marami tayong choices. That's why uh, students actually enjoy yung mga simulations natin sa online learning. Uh, if you're going to compare that with the traditional. But I'm thinking also na uh, sa traditional method kasi dun sa laboratory, uh, our students is also excited in performing things in the lab. Okay, so let us now look at other considerations. I hope that, uh, and I think that some of us or uh, almost all of us are familiar with the TPAC model. No? So it was uh, proposed 1986 pa. Pero anong sinasabi dito sa model na ito? So as a teacher, as a science teacher, uh, we should uh, we should uh, see to it that uh, we, there is a balance of these three areas no pagdating sa sa ano natin sa pagtuturo. So a certain a science teacher should be knowledgeable in terms of his or her content. Syempre, yun naman yung ano mo dapat na master mo, di ba? So parang that is the major and the fundamental thing uh, if you're a science teacher, you should know your content. Kahit balibalik ta rin ka dyan, ayan. So alam mo ang content mo. And then aside from that, of course, uh, the pedagogical knowledge. So ibig sabihin, uh, the way you you present that the content no, it really matters because uh, some of our students uh, find it difficult, okay? Uh, find science difficult. Some of them are not interested in science at all. Uh, we have to... Uh, do something about it. No, hindi pwedeng kung sino lang yung gustong matuto, siya lang ang matututo. So, we have here the pedagogical knowledge and of course, the technological knowledge. And uh, so, for now, because we have the emergency remote teaching or the remote learning per se, uh, it is not uh, enough that you have, uh, ano, no, you're good in content and you're good in pedagogy. Siyempre, uh, there should be uh, no, some uh, applications that you know, you should have a technological know-how. So yun yung mga ano natin. How, dati, ano lang eh, Microsoft Office magsusurvive na. Diba? PowerPoint, okay ka na. But now, uh, the students are uh, have already encountered some apps no, that uh, maybe in some of our, their uh, classes, eh, hahanapin din nila sa'yo yun. Kaya uh, we should also expose ourselves and uh, explore some of those applications. And uh, we also have this, so what, what, uh, what does uh, Garrison, Anderson, and Archer claim? You know, there are three important things that we have to consider when uh, for a certain optimal educational experience, especially when you are online. The first one is the cognitive presence. So, ibig sabihin ito, uh, students need an environment where they are free to construct meaning. So you are uh, giving them activities that they can work on their own and uh, they can work collaboratively. So mamaya ipapa, ibibigyan ko po kayo ng mga ilan sa mga examples. And then, of course, the, teacher pres uh, the teacher's presence should not be missing no, in the picture. So the students uh, should feel that the teacher is always there. Because uh, ngayon nga, no, ang problem natin... Uh, with this uh, remote uh, learning ano, uh, situation, 
yung mga estudyante natin, syempre, they all, they are also longing uh, for our presence, no? So, kaya kahit pagod na pagod tayo, talagang we really have to uh, let them feel that uh, we are there to support them. So, that's it. The teaching presence is uh, important uh, to guide the students, no? To uh, for them to uh, to comply with the requirements of the course at the same time para ma-feel nila na talagang ano sila. Uh, they are being guided. And then social presence, of course. One of the problems in online learning is the fe- the feeling of isolation. No, maraming, Kaya nga, di ba, uh, even before, meron naman tayo talagang mga online learning platforms. Meron tayong mga open universities. But uh, why is it that the dropout rates on uh, open universities a uh, long time ago ay mataas? Kasi wala silang physical na kaklase na they could ano they could have lunch with, wala silang ano uh, kausap, 'di ba? Kasi nga it's a, a transaction between you and your teacher alone. So yun yung ano doon, yun yung problem natin. And uh, right now, since inevitable nga yan na mangyari dahil because of this uh, pandemic, then we have to uh, see to it that uh, we are creating online community wherein the students can actually feel welcome no di ba sa hierarchy of needs syempre yung belongingness isa yan sa mga fundamentals aside from that uh, they also have to work with their peers okay so yun yun a problem natin ngayon is that uh, natatapos ang school year siguro nang hindi sila masyadong magkakakilala uh, long time ago di ba pag uh, after the class kasi meron pa kayong ano eh, after class activity so meron na meron pa kayong interaction with your peers but right now our students uh, don't have that opportunity so when we combine these three there should there will be an uh, an optimum uh, educational experience okay so let's proceed to the next so let us now have some ano no ideas here from Anwar Ali and uh, Rami Barum in 2008 they mentioned that Uh, when when the teacher uh, uses an overwhelming ano, or puts an overwhelming emphasis on pedagogy, such as of course we know this now constructivism, problem based learning, and others now project based and so on, without adequate technological support, uh, it will never achieve the desired result. So kaya nga sinasabi natin kanina yung tipak mahalaga yon, no? A uh, content, pedagogy, and at the same time the technology to deliver the course or the subject. Aside from that, if you have a hair or if you uh, put heavy reliance on technology, puro ano na lang, puro apps na lang, no, puro automation na lang ang ginawa mo. Wala ka namang well-defined pedagogy and uh, of course uh, some some things that you are you should be observing when you're teaching. Ayun na nga. So the learning process will still be ineffective. No, parang ganun lang siya. So kaya yun the balance of the three uh, is expected for uh, when we deliver uh, virtual classes. Okay po. So let's now proceed to the next. So uh, how how about this? No? So itong tat, itong mga ito po they could uh, exist synchronously or asynchronously. And uh, we are using different kinds of uh, different kinds of materials for them. So the last session with Dr. Sheila Sia, uh, she mentioned uh, and discussed uh, the uh, guidelines and some of the things to consider when you are uh, preparing modules naman. So we can skip this one. Okay, and uh, another thing that we have to consider is the Moore's framework of interaction. So nakita nyo po na medyo matagal na to. Siyempre sa education, matagal na kasi silang na-propose. But they still hold true and they are uh, they should be considered naman when we are teaching. Anong sinasabi dito? There are three fundamental uh, considerations here. No, you have to consider the student, the teacher, and the content. Now, what are the uh, specifics for this? Number one, that there should be a rapport and collaboration between the teacher and the student. So yun yung yun lang naman yung ano nito, yung sinasabi, no? There should be a feedback that occurs between the student and the teacher. So kung hindi na iintindihan ng student yung sinasabi ng teacher, then he or she should tell the teacher. Uh, kung may gustong i-communicate yung teacher to the student, they should communicate it clearly and especially the expectations of the course and of the teacher sa student. Now, aside from that, uh, the content, the, the interaction between the content and uh, the student, no? Well, uh, this is somehow uh, well in the first uh, in the first year of the pandemic, uh, this, the the teachers were actually forced to make or create modules, di ba? So kaya nasa trial phase pa lang yung mga module na yon. And then uh, after some time naman na na optimize naman yung ano niya, yung content niya, no? Naayos naman na validate naman siya as a uh, time uh, goes by. So, 
As you can see here, you know, ang sinasabi is that uh, the, con- the, the student should be able to interact with the content. So when they, when they co- interact with the LMS, for example, or the learning management system of the school, um, will it be easy for them to learn the, the, co- the, uh, no, the content, the subject or the course? So that's it. You know? Or nakaka- uh, sometimes uh, what, what, the thing that we don't want is the LMS itself hinders the learning of the students. Ayan. So, yun yung hindi natin gusto at uh, possibly bang mangyari. I think it's also possible if it is not designed well. And uh, of course, the teacher and the content also are uh, interacting with each other. So, utilization of social media in uh, so online courses provides opportunity to enhance uh, engagement through social interaction. So, that's it. And then, uh, when we look at the, ano, no, the details of this, So these are some of the things that we have to consider and uh, we're going to uh, discuss them uh, later on. So iisa-isahin po natin. Okay po? And then lastly, for the first part, uh, we have to consider that we are, when we are designing um, activities uh, to be delivered and used for uh, virtual lectures or uh, uh, teaching, teaching virtually, we have to consider na meron tayong tinatawag na three layers of learning. Okay, the first one is the physical environment. Okay, so the physical environment, the second is the virtual space, and then the third is the culture, the effect of culture on students. So, anong ibig sabihin nito? Uh, the students are being exposed to different kinds of, ano kasi, no, um, uh, aspects or factors that affects their learning. For example, uh, in chemistry, when you are teaching um, acids and bases, Uh, the physical environment could be inside the school. Tama? When we're in, in the laboratory, you, you uh, allow them to have some experience uh, using equipment, pH meters, uh, mga pH papers natin, and so on. So, ginagamit natin sila to introduce the content. And aside from that, of course, uh, in the laboratory din, ano, in, the, in the laboratory, we can also use some natural indicators And of course, you can get that from ano, from eggplants. You can get that from other uh, plant materials with the pigment, no? Na required for uh, for this purpose. Ano eh, possible na mapagawa mo to sa bahay, pero it depends on the age of the student. So one thing is, of course, you can use simulation. So ito na naman, no? Yung uh, yung pet natin, no? So ginagamit natin yan. Aside from that, uh, other simulations can also be, do- be done. You can also ask them to watch videos in YouTube and uh, in other uh, in other uh, platforms. Or otherwise, the the teacher himself or herself can uh, can discuss that to students by demonstrating, no? So parang uh, hindi ko sure kung nagawa niyo na to before no you're, you you're doing the the, the activity uh, in front of your camera so that your students can observe ayan so and then uh, you you uh, discuss things with them now aside from that what else the the greater thing actually is the cultural exposure different uh, students have their uh, have different cultural exposures for example may acids and bases ba doon sa ano na doon sa Is there a concept of uh, related to acids and bases when when farmers uh, burn the ano no yung mga rice hulls at yung mga straws yung mga hay uh, we know that uh, these uh, compound uh, diba, these materials when you burn them and they turn into ash when the ash mixes with water nagiging basic yung solution ano so pero syempre because this is a cultural practice the students may or may not know that And as a teacher, uh, we have to bridge these three environments. So, ibig sabihin, uh, you can you can ano you can actually uh, allow them to perform some experiments or somehow watch them uh, use simulations. But in the end, we would like them to reco- uh, recognize or realize that these all of these uh, concepts are applicable to what they uh, observe around them. No, lalong lalo na kung ginagamit sila or alam yun na element ng culture. So lastly, before we proceed the, sec- the second one, when we are designing these uh, this, uh, learning episodes for our students, it is good that we have to uh, start with the end in mind. What does it mean? Uh, so what, what are the outcomes that you are expecting your students to, to have or to, uh, to exhibit after, after the instruction? So that's it. And then you work backwards. No? Pag, uh, 
gagawa ka nung ano, nung objectives mo, tapos gagawa ka rin ng instructional plan mo. So, mas okay yon kesa yung uh, mag-set ka ng uh, objectives mo, tapos meron kang, ano, meron kang, uh, meron kang instruction, tapos mag, doon ka palang mag-iisip ng assessment sa dulo, no? Uh, mas ano yun eh, mas complicated yung ganung process. So you you start with the end in mind. So for example, in uh, here here in the Philippines, we have the ano di ba the milks o yun. So meron na tayong milks, meron tayong curriculum guides. Nandoon na yung end na gustong ma, ano ma-achieve, di ba? Nandoon na yung end na gusto nating ma-exhibit ng mga estudyante natin. So when we are expecting those outcomes, you can now work backwards, no? So you can design the Uh, the lessons uh, so that they could hit those targets and uh, more or less uh, the uh, learning experience will be successful. So that's the first one. Now let's proceed to the uh, second. So we have the student treatment during an online class. So this is, uh, I think, quite short. No? So what are the things that we have to do uh, when we are dealing with our students? The first one is you have to communicate Communicate your expectations clearly and remind them of such expectations whenever needed. So, for example, uh, in I for um, I for myself, I'm I'm uh, preparing a Gantt chart like this, the one that you see on the left. No, so the Gantt chart somehow uh, reminds my students that uh, these are the deadlines, these are the uh, requirements of the course, how we could uh, move along from one week to another, and yung mga requirements natin, ano yung gagawin natin, kailan ako lecture when will you uh, when will you report so those are the things that uh, we have to clarify to our students no the expectations at the same time talking about expectations are the rubrics uh, do not uh, do not uh, miss or somehow neglect the ano no the importance of uh, introducing the rubrics to your students uh, siguro uh, kung alam nila yung grading system of, uh, which is in the syllabus that's okay Now, for those who are teaching in the DepEd or in the senior high school, junior high school, it's also good that uh, you show the rubrics to your students so that they they know what is uh, expected of them. So, yun lang naman yung first tip ko sa inyo. The second is you have to pre uh, present all class requirements and expectations during the first day of the class. So, para hindi tayo nagugulat. Ang problem natin with uh, online teaching is, of course, we have to... Uh, Well, no, no, we have to allow our students uh, to have some uh, modality. Uh, pwede natin, we could actually surprise them. No? Para, oh, uh, may quiz tayo ngayon. O oh, ganun, ano? oh, next week magre-report ka. Uh, dito hindi pwede. Kasi nga, uh, alam naman natin, no? we are in the uh, pandemic situation. Do not add to the ano, to the stress of people, especially of our students. Aside from that, uh, if if you have these class requirements which were set no prior to the start of everything, no in the in the term, uh, mas madali kasi communicate sa kanila yun, you know, at ma monitor sila if they are submitting their requirements and so on. So observe and practice regularity of class activities. This is uh, one uh, one advice that I could give to everyone. So for example, there are routines when we are uh, when we have the face to face uh, ano um, classes. Meron tayo niyan, di ba? Meron tayong routine activities. Ah uh, dito rin no sa classes. So, kayo, ano bang ginagawa niyo? Sige, tatanungin ko kayo. Uh, dahil marami sa atin I think ay nagtuturo. Uh, when you open when you open the ano the session meeting for your students, what is the first thing that you do? Yan. Sige nga, can I can I know? So What what what's the first thing that you do? So once that you already admitted the ano the students in the session room sa so online yung halimbawa na Google Meet na kayo o nakapasok na sila o kaya naman ano tawag dito nasa Zoom kayo naka-enter the students have already entered what do you do okay so opener kamustahan greetings ayan kamustahan ng ano to feelings check okay <laughs> may feeling feelings check o greet them okay ayan so th that is very important Actually, may slide ako for that. No, tignan natin, tama ba na i-greet pa natin sila? Anyway, lahat naman tayo ay nagkita-kita naman sa online. No? You, can, you can just uh, look at their faces and say, oh, we can start now. So, tignan natin kung magandang practice yan. No? And uh, is, are there some ano, no, evidences that uh, support that? So, ito, no, ang sinasabi natin, you have to, uh, you have to ano, practice reg, uh, regular ano, no, routine. Para yung mga students alam nila. So for example ako, when I open the ano, 
when I open the uh, the platform, the online platform, nagta-type ako agad. Good morning everyone. Uh, ganun na. Tapos ano na 'yan, mag magtatawag mag push ko na yung ano, yung recording, tapos i-greet ko sila isa-isa and so on. So yun yung yun yung kadalasan na nagiging ano ko, nagiging routine ko sa class. So now let's look at the ano no the basis. So most of you would say that uh Okay, so most of you would say that uh, you you are greeting your students. No, you are greeting your students. So is there a basis for that? So is that is that a good practice? Actually, it is. No, we have to greet our students so that uh, they would. Uh, it sets the tone of the class. Kasi. So, for example, here in this uh, study uh, titled "Positive Greetings at the Door: Evaluation of a Low Cost, High Yield, Proactive Classroom Management Strategy." Uh, this one uh, was published when uh, 2018. So just look at the highlighted text. Now students in the positive greetings at the door classes evidenced a 20% gain in academic engaged time, which corresponds to an extra 12 minutes on task behavior per instructional hour or an additional hour of engagement over the course of a five-hour instructional day. So as you can see, uh, uh, it is just an effect of greeting them, greeting them, no, just uh, setting the tone right for the class. And uh, that has a positive effect on students. Uh, it also says here that on a larger scale, of course, we are, ex uh, we are saying that the students and the teacher will both benefit on this. And you don't have to, uh, you ha you don't have to invest any financial ano, di ba? financial uh, efforts on this or financial inputs to this. So you just greet them and uh, that will somehow affect the, uh, or put some ano, uh, positive effect on instruction. So that's it. Now, another thing. So what are the things or what are the, uh, some of the suggested ways on how we can do it? The first one is call the students, uh, the student names and uh, say hello, Uh, good morning or good afternoon. So some of you might say that, uh, sir, I have uh, so many students. Uh, for example, you have 30 students. Then you call them by batch. Okay? So you just do not say hello everyone and then they will just uh, reply in chorus. So you, you, you ask them and uh, you call their name. So sometimes... I do that no, uh, by batch. So I call three names, five names at once, and then I, I hear them naman that uh, they are, are replying. Yan. The second one is uh, you have to take time to learn the pronunciation of the names of your students. So I think uh, some of us uh, have already experienced this, uh, that uh, some of your students may have some ano, no, names which are hard to pronounce. Uh, in the... In the ano, In our uh, in our screen, we have here the uh, website called uh, pronouncenames.com. Okay, pronouncenames.com. So you can uh, type or key in the names, and uh, if it is in their database, then they can actually uh, provide you the uh, suggested pronunciation of the name. So somehow for Filipinos, we are uh, we are uh, used to some of the names, right? Uh, pronouncing some names, but uh, of course. Uh, there are some uh, other uh, names that are really hard to pronounce. So you can, you can, I think you can use this. So how does it work? So let me just play a video so that. The following pronunciation is brought to you by so pronouncenames.com. It will, uh, it will uh, state Carnegie. the pronunciation of the name. Carnegie. Okay, so I think that's that's enough. Okay, so according to Dale Carnegie, Carnegie. Oops. Okay, according to Dale Carnegie, remember Carnegie. that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. Okay, so you have to know your students. You have to, of course, you have to pronounce their uh, their names well. Okay, so let's now proceed to. Sorry. So there are other additional terms. Uh, Tips the here. So you may ask your students to click the thumbs up, raise hand, or for example, in Google Meet, we only have raise hand uh, and other eyes, eye icons that will somehow prompt you that they have that they recognize that you have called their names. The fourth one is uh, you may also ask them to type their greetings in the chat box if they have ex uh, if they are experiencing some audio and internet connectivity problems. And then also you can uh, tell them some some ano, some statements that will somehow brighten their day. Ayan. So I'm so glad that you are with us today. 
So let us uh, refrain from using some uh, some negative comments like you are behind from missing class yesterday. So why are you not? Why are you absent? Or why were you absent? So those uh, those comments will not be good. No, will it will not be a good uh, starting point for your students. <laughs> so greet them and uh, somehow uh, give them some comments that will uh, brighten and lighten their days. Okay, the next thing, review what you discussed during the pre uh, previous session before you uh, present or move on or proceed to the next topic. So that is what our syllabi or syllabus is for, right? So for example, you are through or done with the week, the first week. So before you proceed to the second week, uh, you can somehow uh, review or provide some uh, key points that you have learned from the previous week or otherwise uh, ask uh, some students to uh, to do the talking for you so that's that's it uh, it's very important because uh, the students should have this uh, no, uh, this idea of where they are right now uh, is is our topic or the previous topic already finished uh, are we going uh, are we supposed to continue with the topic are we leaving the topic behind so they have to know especially if you have some students who were absent the previous meeting. So that's that's very important. Okay, so with that, can I see a, re, uh, what's this? Uh, some reactions here we can, uh, we can choose from. So can I see a thumbs up if you're still there? Hello, everyone. How are you? So I hope that, uh, uh, I hope that you are doing great. So uh, please, uh, uh, Give me some thumbs up so that I, 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 I'll still know that you're okay. Let's proceed. So the, the third one, or the uh, I think this is uh, the fifth point, is uh, there are times that uh, the students would like uh, to participate, but they do not want, uh, they don't want to be called, right? So they don't want to be singled out because they're quite afraid that their answers might be wrong. So in the face-to-face -face classes, uh, classes. Uh, this is one of the uh, no, one of the features uh, which might or might or might not be present in the uh, no, uh, in the uh, remote teaching uh, platform. So, for example, this one. So we can use some uh, application so that we can ask the question, and then your your uh, your uh, students can actually choose among the answers. But they can uh, you you will never uh, you they will never be identified. So I think uh, most of you might agree or may agree that uh, if you do this, uh, ano, you do this uh, strategy, uh, majority of your students, if not all, will participate. Uh, in contrast to um, in contrast to asking them one by one, oh, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And so on. So can you explain? So that's that's uh, very stressful for students. No. So actually. If I'm going to do it right now to our participants, I'm going to call somebody and then ask them questions. Uh, they will also feel stressed. But if I'm going to ask them some uh, some questions and then allow you to to uh, choose among the the letters, you will not be identified. Anyway, it's formative, so we you can actually enjoy uh, the activity, right? So. Let us now look at the other thing, like attention span. How, how important is the attention span of uh, students? So they said that the maximum uh, length of a lecture should be 18 minutes. Uh, that's the optimum. That's the optimum. But of course, for example, in the Philippines, we have some subjects uh, which lasts like how many? Uh, one hour sometimes. And in the college, we have uh, classes the three hours, five hours, especially if it is a major ship course, right? So let's talk about attention span. So the attention span, according to one post here coming from uh, from this source, no, this is this was a po a posted 2010. Uh, John Stone and Percival observed uh, students on over 90 lectures given by 12 different lecturers, and they found out that uh, those lectures who, which were held or uh, delivered 10 to 18 minutes would uh, no, no, would would be optimal by the end of the lecture attention span became only 3 to 4 minutes long so what does it mean if your students are uh, even if uh, no matter how motivated they are uh, their at attention span is quite short so the the most important details or the information that you want to to convey 
or to uh, to tell them should be delivered on those on those uh, period of time so or in that period of time three to four minutes so yung ganun lang naman no? that's the basic consideration and uh, another I found also another study that supports the same thing but I think it's not only three to four minutes but 18 you might observe that the TED talk you're familiar with TED talk right so most of their uh, most of their talks 18 minutes only uh tell them that it would uh it would go beyond 20 minutes why because they are considering the attention span of viewers and uh let me just share to you this uh this uh study uh advances in physiological education this is uh, or this was published right 2016 okay 2016 so the title attention span during lectures 8 seconds 10 or more right and here are the findings so the rule dictating, they mentioned 18 minutes is based on the notion that 18 minutes is long enough to have a serious presentation. Of course, because it's really hard to uh, deliver a lecture or a presentation, especially in science, that's very short, like five minutes, 10 minutes. But uh, some of our uh, teachers can do that. Uh, 18 minutes is long enough for you to have a serious presentation without... Uh, causing some detrimental effect on the attention span of the of the viewers. Aside from that, it is criticized that as being too long to hold students' attention based on several authors claims that a student's attention span declines precipitously after uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, wala na yan, no? So they are just uh, they are just uh, looking at you, they might be uh, they might seem listening but uh, I'm not sure what what what's on their mind though. Uh, when 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 uh, they just stay there because of course you are their teacher. But uh, in terms of the attention span, so this is what the uh, the research would say. Okay, so thus many authors would make the case that a lecture session should be, uh, last no more than ten to fifteen minutes. You can cut the session and uh, have some break and then uh, do another resume for another. Uh, uh, another part of the lecture. So yun ang pwede natin uh, gawin. Okay? So in line with this, you have to observe some health breaks, especially if the class is very long. Okay? So this is just a picture of a coffee. Not all students are advised to do that or to drink that. But uh, if there is a long synchronous session, then you can ask your students to take some health breaks. Yeah. So that, uh, that would be uh, that would be uh, for your benefit as well because you're talking five hours, three hours, what will happen? Uh, can you imagine yourself talking uh, uh, as long as three hours? Then you have three classes in a day or five, and then you're talking the entire year or for 10 months. What will happen to your um, larynx? So that's actually an abuse of your... Uh, okay, so that's it. Now, so uh, these are some of the slides that I mentioned a while ago about... Uh, about some of the apps that you can use for uh, anonym, uh, anonymized uh, response of your students. So you can actually use this. This is a v, uh, Vivo, okay, Vivo, which is an online poll. And uh, when you use that, uh, you just have to key in the question and all of those options. And then uh, you will have this summary like this, okay? And then uh, you can share this in your PowerPoint presentation. So it, in the PowerPoint presentation, you can, you can actually uh, scan the QR code there and it will direct you to the uh, questionnaire wherein you can participate. You can also ask questions to your teacher. Ayan. Oh, for example, in my case, so I was the one who made this. So in the account on the VBOX account that I created, I will see your questions there. I can also see the uh, summary of your responses. Yeah. So if you, can, uh, if you have your uh, cell phones right now, you can actually test this one if this works. Okay, so I think I, 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 can, uh, I can share the, the link later on so that uh, you can also use this. So this is same as Mentimeter. Yeah, oh, and Slido. Okay, so this is, uh, this is actually free. You can, uh, you, can, you can use this for your classes. And uh, hopefully, uh, it, it also, uh, it is an additional to your, uh, uh, to your applications or the applications that you use. Okay. Now, let's look at some other things. So what are the other things that we can do for our students? Uh, it is also advice that you check on your students, especially during the time of pandemic. No? Uh, you have to ask uh, what are they, uh, how are they feeling? No, you have to check on your students. Uh, one of the research that I found, um, 
this one now enhancing teaching effectiveness and student learning outcomes by uh, Paulini, uh, it, uh, it is mentioned here, research shows that students are more likely to interact with the instructors and be more academically successful if their instructors possess leadership skills and are sociable, okay? Not only being a good leader that you can facilitate the class, okay? Not only a good facilitator in the class discussion, you should also be sociable. Uh, of course, they would admire that you are intelligent and uh, you're objective and supportive. But uh, being sociable and uh, being, uh, for example, uh, uh, considering their, uh, their situation is very helpful for students, especially in right now that we are in a pandemic. And another thing that I would like to share with everybody is ito, yung sinasabi, ano, or what is being said here in the slide. Faculty who encourage students to come to office hours or more or less to meet no, online because we are on the context of a remote teaching right now, bring themselves to the classroom share personal anecdotes or share what uh, what's happening what's going on in their uh, in their lives uh, current current events in their lives and demonstrate a genuine personal and academic interest in students report stronger student outcomes okay so being supportive so how how can you be supportive there are some teachers who actually send some emails to their students uh, saying uh, how are you uh, if there's uh, a concern uh, Please feel free to tell me, or just uh, if you want to talk about anything, you you can actually uh, talk uh, talk uh, or share the, those things with me. Uh, and especially if you were assigned to an advisory class, there, so that that would be very helpful. So let us uh, support them not only in terms of their academic needs, of course, uh, their their emotional needs and stability is very important as of now. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's another thing or another consideration that uh, I would like to. Uh, to share with you. Now, uh, let's proceed to the next figure. I want you to answer this question. How many bars do you see? Can you type it now in the chat box? Three. How many? Four. Three. Oh, seven. <laughs> so three plus four. <laughs> three plus four. I saw that seven. Okay, three. Four and seven. Those are the predominant numbers. Last five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you very much for your participation. So I cannot call your names individually because, of course, in the interest of time, right? So when you uh, face with this kind of situation, this is another optical illusion. And I would say that uh, when you were asked, how many bars are there? It actually doesn't matter and uh, you don't have to worry because it's not only who got confused uh, because of this uh, figure. It is actually a test of perception, right? For some people, they would argue that uh, when you look at the edges, you can actually see four bars. That indicates that there are four bars. When you look at the sides, uh, somehow it's really visible no, to most of us. Uh, there are uh, three bars in the, in the picture because uh, it depends on... How you look at it and at the same time who is looking no you might experience as more just like six and nine ayan, according to ma'am abigail uh, mejia so thank you very much ma'am so actually that's the same story with six and nine now uh let us know uh, zero in with the term perception so how important is the student's perception to their instructors or teachers let us define perception first it is the ability to see here or uh, become aware of something through your senses okay so that's that's very physical the next is a belief or an opinion often held by many people based on uh, how things seem so sometimes there are students who are really interested in the subject not only because they, they are really curious about that subject but of course uh, the teacher plays an important role for them to love that subject right so it's an awareness of the elements of, uh, the, of environment through physical sensation. And actually, perception can also be uh, is synonymous to appreciation. So for, for your students to appreciate or perceive the class or your course on a, on a lighter note no, or, in, or, or in, a good, ano, no, in a good light, no? so you have to do something. So how, why do we have to value uh, the perception of our students? Because in this figure, I want you to uh, to, re to remember this. Because in when we are studying education, of course, these are the things that we usually encounter. Attitude, engagement, how are they related to each other? 
there are so many paradigms, but I think this is quite simple, that the perception of your students or the way they appreciate the course actually affects their attitude, of course. So whenever there is a positive perception, there is also a positive or attitude or an attitude that favors your course, right? So attitude is the belief that one has towards the people or the surroundings or the course that you are teaching. And if they have positive attitude towards that subject, then they would be more engaged, right? And uh, this is what we want because whenever there is an engagement, there is a psychological investment on the subject. So ibig sabihin, when you look at the outputs of your students, you can really see that they're pouring out their effort simply because they are highly engaged because they like the subject. Or maybe on a further, uh, further consideration, they also like the teacher. Now, how important is this, no, the interaction between the three? Because whenever there is a, um, a positive or a high engagement, high level of engagement among students, of course, the, uh, the different outcomes that we would, uh, we, we would like in an instruction to be fulfilled are fulfilled and satisfied. So, for example, students are satisfied, they, are, they feel motivated, their performance are good, and of course, they lose some sense of isolation because they are highly engaged. And... Uh, Furthermore, of course, uh, these things are very important because they allow us to attain the curricular intended learning outcomes. Because for most of us, if you think that curriculum is just a set of subjects that you take, it's not. It's the totality of the experience that you, that you get whenever you enter the educational institution that you are into. So that's, that's why uh, we have to value perception. So most of the teachers would say, or some of the teachers long time ago would say that, uh, well, if they want to learn they have to uh, no, they have to be motivated uh, intrins uh, in the intrinsic motivation should be there but there are times that students will not appreciate your subject until you do some uh, some sort of an effort uh, to 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 lure them to like the subject right so you have to do some uh, no, some efforts as well so let us now look at other things. Now, what are the other things that uh, matters most to our students? Ver Nonverbal communication. This is, uh, this is very important because, uh, as you can see, your face is zoomed in, this, uh, uh, in, the, in the platform, in the screen. The students can easily see your eyebrows, whether, of course, uh, you look confused because of what they're saying uh, or otherwise uh, you're happy or you're angry, they can, they can easily see that, okay? So let me just share you another review article on this. So an impact of the teacher's nonverbal communication on success in teaching. Okay, so what, what does it say? Here, uh, in, the, in, uh, in the results, it, uh, it, they mentioned that they found out that uh, the more teachers use verbal and nonverbal communication, the more efficacious their education and the, the students' academic progress work, okay? But I think this is not the uh, main meat of their, uh, of their uh, or the point of their paper. It is on the next slide. Whenever they mentioned here that if you were uh, given or you were presented two stimuli, one is verbal and the other is nonverbal, you, you tend to believe the nonverbal more rather than the verbal. So that's it. So it says here, nonverbal communication is highly reliable in the communication process. So if, if the recipient of the message is between two contradictory verbal and nonverbal messages, there are some teachers who are doing this. Like, what uh, I think what you're doing is okay. But, but when you look at the face, it, it's not okay. But the teacher is telling you, yeah, it's okay. So you are now confused between the two stimuli. So uh, the uh, logic dictates that we push uh, towards nonverbal or believing the nonverbal message rather than or over the verbal message. So that's it. Okay, so very important that uh, when you face your students as well, uh, and uh, maybe uh, you, you have to wear your best smiles when you, when you see them, when you meet your class, and uh, because nonverbal communication matters most, especially in online classes. Okay, so we have to consider that most of our students may not like the situation that they are in right now. And maybe meeting you, seeing you in their screen would be the best thing that might happen on their uh, today, no? And then uh, all of a sudden you're angry, you're you're grumpy. So what do we expect? Okay. 
So let's now proceed. Uh, it is also okay that uh, you give comments to your students, but you have to thread your words well. This is another thing that we have to we have to practice. It is not that you don't have to criticize what they're doing if they're do what they're doing is wrong. It is just that you can choose your words uh, carefully so that you can somehow convey the message without hurting them. So for example, some of you have skipped the past few quizzes. You won't pass this class if you don't uh, if you continue to do so. So uh, this is one message. No, this is one message. But a better way to phrase it is like this: Thank you for your work in this class. I know it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot to manage because we know that there are so many things on this student's plate right now. Just a reminder: Make sure that you are taking all the quizzes to help you be successful here. Uh, please contact me so you're open the possibility that if they if they think that they missed something then they can somehow uh, contact you uh, for further details so then you can somehow uh, you can somehow uh, put across a certain positive uh, positive in, uh, information and message to your students okay so they will be more open to you be considerate in terms of deadlines. This is another thing. So when students say, "Mom, sir, can we pass it next week? Of course, you have to have some limitations on that. But uh, please be considerate uh, in terms of uh, deadlines. Okay, and you have to harmonize your requirements. So if it is possible that uh, you could talk to some other teachers for you to have an, an, an output, a single output, wherein all of you can get some, of, uh, some, uh, some, some components to grade. Uh, the better because that will lessen the burden of our students. For example, this one is not a school requirement. This is actually a contest uh, spearheaded by the Department of Education for the National Science and Technology Week uh, this year because we don't have the NSTF or the science fair. They have uh, what you call CNC Kula. Uh, uh, the students were uh, requested to, or the contestants, the students, are actually uh, requested to to make some videos on uh, concerning some uh, concepts in uh, hard to learn concepts in science. And uh, in doing so, when you watch that, uh, most of the uh, content act are actually accurate. You know? uh, and aside from that, they are actually using some skills there that is not only from science. Uh, maybe the content is on science, but uh, there are some mathematics there. Uh, the, the way that they uh, that they uh, convey the information or relay the information is can be analyzed by and graded by their language teachers. And at the same time, the way they um, made the video and the animations there could be a product or a contribution coming from their I ICT professor. So as you can see, or teacher. So you can see uh, that uh, there is a certain uh, collaboration among those, uh, those areas of study that makes them somehow successful. Okay, so if we can do that, then somehow we can uh, we can lessen the burden of our students. So let's proceed. Respect the time of your students. So if it is a uh, holiday, do not give them. Uh, you you do you don't have to give them our requirements. You don't even have to message them during a holiday uh, to to tell them that. Uh, uh, of course, uh, you have to you you have to remind them. But do not uh, do the remind uh, the, uh, or send reminders during the holiday because that is stressful for students. Now, aside from that, there are some teachers who would say you can submit your requirements until uh, 12, uh, 12 midnight. Uh, that somehow, if you would like to do that, why not 8 a.m. tomorrow? So if they if if your students would decide to work overnight, then that's their problem. But uh, for them to stay awake because they can actually submit until 12 midnight, uh, that's also stressful. And we found that there are also some parents who are uh, who are against that uh, practice. Okay, so you, we have to respect the time of our students. Now, let's proceed to the next. You, it's okay for you to be approachable, but you have to set some limits. So in depth ed, we say, they say here, uh, hanggang maaari ay iwasang magtanong sa guro ng dis oras ng gabi. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, there are some cases, actually not some, but there are <laughs> there are frequent and uh, many cases where the students will send you emails uh, or um, chats, you know, uh, chats through the messenger or some text messages uh, in the middle of the night, midnight. They are actually sending those messages. Well, if you are not actually required to uh, to address them if it is. Uh, after the office hours. So you just have to communicate it to your students. 
confidence that you are going to respond within a certain span of time. Okay, because if you tolerate that that practice, then they will they will do it again. No, there is a high possibility that they do it that, that they will do it again. And then another thing is you have to observe uh, or uh, remind your students to observe netiquette. No, netiquette. So for example, uh, ito, uh, 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 pressing the present, <laughs> thinking that it is present, hindi daw ito attendance. No? Well, uh, the different online class etiquettes, are there There's so many naman in the internet that you could download or otherwise you can make your own. But uh, we this is uh, setting the class rules kasi for your students when they are attending your uh, classes no so one thing for example the attire when they attend your your class so do you demand or are you requesting them to uh, be in their somehow uh, decent attire Ayan. so it depends on the faculty member if you will require them or not but of course it would be good because it seems it is just like they're studying at home still they're attending your class right so be a role model to your students. For example, be on time when you attend the synchronous meeting, when you have some uh, references, you cite them. There are so many aspects of being a role model kasi for our students. So I think uh, that, that, uh, that is self-explanatory. Okay, so we're through with number two. Now let us now look at and move on to the third one. What are the different considerations in uh, lessons, now preparing the lessons for a virtual lecture? So I think we have to uh, move past uh, and fa uh, past here because uh, there's uh, there are plenty of slides uh, for this component. So number one, we have to focus on most essential learning competencies. I know that uh, since we are master of content, the teacher is actually and is always tempted to pour everything to their students we, because what what we want is for them to master what we know. But uh, during the time of pandemic, uh, the synchronous session is really limited. That's the problem. And uh, so we have to focus on the most essential learning competency. And uh, for example, in the case of the Philippines, uh, the Department of Education uh, mentioned that there, there are so many considerations for them to choose or to, to, to tell you or to assign this competency as an essential competency or not. So it is flashed on the screen course. And then uh, if you're going to look at those, uh, if you're going to read through the, uh, the characteristics of an essential learning competency, then you may, uh, you may somehow recognize that they should be enduring. So what does that mean? So uh, uh, what is endurance? No? Concede, uh, a certain competency is enduring if it is considered to be the primary determining factor uh, wherein that, that competency, no, even out of school, after the school, uh, they will use or that competency is important for them. So, that, so, for example, learning competencies like research skills is very important. Reading comprehension, uh, writing, map reading, these are hypothesis testing, especially in science. All of these are very important. And I think there's no single topic that can teach them. So the uh, the depth ed in the case of the Philippines, of course, we have the milks to support this uh, the development of these skills and competencies. Yeah. Okay. So another thing that I would like to tell everyone is that we have to be aware of the critical and hard to learn contents, especially for example, for us uh, because we are teaching. For example, me, I'm teaching chemistry. Uh, of course, we, we recognize that there are some prerequisite knowledge that must be taught to students before we allow them to move to the next level of, uh, of the, uh, or the harder or more difficult concepts. So it should be clear to us. For example, if you're a teacher, you know that uh, we are studying interactions you know, between molecules, uh, between atoms that comprise a molecule, uh, those, are, uh, those are important. But uh, when we look at the applications, for example, mga environmental applications, we have to see, uh, we have to recognize that, for example, learning bonding is very important, and uh, because if you know the difference between intra and intermolecular forces, you can somehow uh, understand that there are different intermolecular forces of attraction, and these uh, forces of attraction, just like hydrogen bonding, is related to these uh, these events and phenomena that you observe, and these phenomena and uh, things that you observe macroscopically are uh, related to the applications of uh, chemistry in some other subjects that we have. So 
somehow if if uh for example you are just teaching bonding and then your some of your students fail to recognize the importance of this concept then more or less uh we do not expect that they will proceed uh, or progress to the higher levels of uh, understanding the course or the subject okay So provide context in both instruction and assessment. So you might be familiar with this. I'm going. Uh, some of you might be familiar uh, to this uh, um, excerpt. No? So it is uh, titled "The Montilation of uh, Traxolin." So let me read to you. Listen very carefully. So it is very important that you learn about Traxolin. Traxolin is a new form of zointer. It is montiled in Seristana. The Seristanians restorate large amount of Febon, then bracter it to Quasel Traxulin. Traxulin may be well one of our most localized nest loss in the future because of our zointer lessage. Now, uh, we, it is really hard to believe, but it's true, that when we give some questions to, to, to students, you know, regardless of a batch, we started this 2015, I think, uh, asking some uh, our sections or different sections of students to to read this and then to give some questions like what is traxodin where is it montilled when you put a score on their uh, on their answers they will get a perfect score they will get a perfect score but when you uh, uh, when you ask them some further questions like honestly what you did what did you learn about traxodin do you even have a mental picture of what traxodin is Okay, so for those who are saying this is not even English, this is not English. This is not also Filipino. Okay, so this is actually a made-up language. But through context, uh, just context clues, the students can actually give you the response that you expect. But the problem is when you ask them, so what is traxodin really? Uh, do you have a mental picture of what is that? Is it a fruit? Is it something that you can eat? Or is it a poisonous substance? They don't know. But they... They perfect the uh, the quiz about this uh, excerpt. So what can we say about that? There are uh, provider students. They just uh, use context clues. So we have to be very careful uh, when we are uh, designing such kind of activities. So you have to provide some context, and uh, it's really hard to understand things which which are out of your context. Okay, so I'm sure that you know it already. So. Another thing is integration. So allow your students to realize that integration of concepts in science is very important. Okay, so there's a hierarchy in terms of system. There is organization. Uh, and uh, despite the fact that we are looking at, 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 uh, at the world, no? it is the same word that we are looking at, it, uh, that we are looking at, but we are using different lenses like physics, chemistry, biology. But at the end of the day, they are actually, com they should be combined Okay, the one one subject or one uh, area of science should also support the other, so that you would have an integrated study and at the same time an understanding of the whole system. So it's very important. So if you fail to do this, then most of the students would think that uh, the, what they got from their science is actually fragmented, and uh, somehow they they cannot make sense of uh, some concepts because of that. Okay. So allow your students to think on how they will use the acquired knowledge in solving the concerns of the society. Because most of the time, we think that uh, the scientist should, be, should look like this. Or can, they, can they really see molecules of, the, for example, strands of a DNA? Can they do that? Most of the, most of the time, people would think that scientists are like this. Right? When students uh, enter the science courses, they are doing this. But actually, uh, we should not uh, we should not uh, stop ourselves from uh, or we should not uh, we should not think uh, of science or being a science major this way. Uh, actually, you should allow your students or uh, somehow encourage them to use the knowledge that they have uh, in terms of one understanding the natural phenomena around them. Aside from that, uh, solving the problems that are found in their immediate societies, environments. So that's that's uh, one thing that we have to prepare them for. And uh, another thing that we have to consider is that culture plays a very, very important uh, role in terms of understanding and appreciating science. So for example, and also the context, uh, context is very important here. For example, you're talking about law of inertia, and then your example is jeepneys, uh, passengers on a jeepney, passengers on a train, 
uh, that suddenly stops or suddenly uh, move from uh, started to move from rest. What happened to the passengers? Those are the typical things that you see from the book. And then for, somehow you realize that some of your students are not actually aware of what a train is because they haven't seen one, but they are aware of this one. Uh, yung, uh, yung, uh, carriage wherein you have your uh, carabao there or other animals. No? So you can see that, uh, well, scientific laws naman are applicable to different examples or systems. So why not use what is in their immediate environment? So that's it. Generate activities that will uh, stimulate their analytical thinking. So you are familiar with the problem-based learning approach. And uh, so it is uh, it infuses, of course, the different... Um, the different details of inquiry-based learning, and uh, of course, the, your science, the usual thing of the, uh, about scientific methods. So, since uh, we are familiar with the PDL uh, as opposed to, for example, traditional learning, we can somehow uh, we can somehow uh, design activities that will encourage our students to undergo this type of inquiry-based learning. But uh, I would like the caveat would be. Uh, the time, of course, when you are giving some PBL, uh, PBL activities that will really take some time. So many, uh, you just have to give them one or two in a term and then just monitor their progress and work with them. So that's it. And then uh, some other uh, things that we can do uh, when we are delivering lectures, you can actually practice this play classroom wherein when they come to the class, they are not all... Uh, well, the, the heads are not empty. They, sh they should have watched something before they attended your class. They should have some questions that uh, somehow lingers in their minds, and then they have to ask, ask the, the question to you so that uh, we, uh, the, the class or the discussion will be more meaningful. That's what we want, of course. Questions may be, uh, that are very difficult or that may be difficult to answer should be given as an assignment or otherwise some task that supports that. And uh, flip classroom is very important because uh, nowadays, for example, we have the synchronous session. The synchronous session is not uh, is not uh, very long, right? Sometimes it's just one hour, one point five hours. And for you to introduce a topic, it's very uh, it's very challenging, especially in science, especially if it is a major ship subject. That's why uh, you have to uh, some of the teachers create some videos that their students can watch. Now, uh, the limitation there is not all of your students can watch the video. So what you're going to do is uh, to, you have to, uh, of course, make some adjustments when you are in the class. But uh, it, would, it would be an uh, advantage for those who watch the video because uh, they have some questions that they can actually ask you when you discuss. Okay? And then, of course, the inquiry-based methods, for example, the 5 E's and the 7 E's should be considered when you are creating or uh, designing some lectures in your class. Okay, so that's the third point. Now let's proceed to the fourth one. What are the things that you have to remember when you are teaching? So a while ago, we, we mentioned some of the tips or, uh, well, considerations in terms of preparation of a lesson. This time you're going to deliver the lesson to your students. Here they are. So the four, uh, this is number four. Please uh, provide a, an outline of discussion so that your students will be familiar and uh, would somehow know if uh, you are near the end or uh, it seems that the lecture is a, a never-ending lecture, of course. So you have to, uh, you have to, uh, you have to uh, show them your uh, outline of discussion. So just like this one. So as you may observe, in the course of our, uh, as we move through the topic or the uh, discussion for today, there's an outline of discussion. So more or less, you say, ah, oh, okay, so two points to go and then we're finished. Okay, or done. Now, aside from that, uh, you should also uh, capitalize on the art of questioning. Okay, the art of questioning. So uh, before I proceed, let us uh, watch this video first. No idea. Can you hear the audio now? 
Uh, wala pa din po, sir. Apa? Ayan po, meron na po. Meron na. As you can see, no, parang uh, more or less, ano lang to, no, parang some, somehow, uh, ano lang, paglokohan. No? But this is very important that when you introduce a lesson, especially if it is a, a new one to your stu- uh, a new one uh, to your students, uh, you have to uh, you use uh, the art of questioning, an appropriate questioning technique. So as you can see, in the first, in the pre- uh, previously, the students can actually. answer the question but when you ask them some difficult questions so without us holding and uh allowing them to uh, no, no, to answer easier ones before you move and uh, progress to the more difficult uh, question that's a problem so you cannot get response anymore at the same time yeah that the danger would be uh the students will leave you and uh, most of them would uh would just uh, say goodbye okay so Please remember, uh, use the art of questioning to check the understanding, diagnose their misconceptions. But uh, aside from that, of course, you have to allow them to respond well to your, uh, to your questions. I have some uh, other points here. Students uh, come to school with a need to learn and students are undertrained, not underbrained. So let us, uh, I would like to uh, highlight or emphasize this second point. Students are undertrained. Maybe some of the questions that you uh, that you ask them, they're not familiar on how to how to address such questions. That's why uh, they cannot respond easily, accordingly uh, to whatever you expect them to, uh, or tell you whatever answer you expect them to give. Now, aside from that, the third one, uh, try to ask each student an equal range of questions, no qu- a quantity, and initially question. of similar difficulty or quality. So remember to choose your question, then uh, you choose your student. So please uh, refrain or avoid uh, calling names of, or calling the name of a student and then that's the, 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 what's next is the question, of course. You give the question first, then you call the student so, so that they could prepare. Another thing is that uh, we must uh, learn to use intensive questioning. But of course, in the... Uh, In the uh, synchronous session, we are limited. No, the number of questions that you can uh, that you can ask your students is quite limited. But despite that limitation, we can somehow do it anyway. Uh, with a certain, uh, you could somehow lessen them. But uh, not, we should not finish the 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 lecture or the session without asking them at all. And then we we must follow up uh, this uh, pattern: question, response, and question. So it's very important. Some of the teachers would give question number one followed by two, three, four, five, six. And then the students will be confused. Uh, which among those questions should I answer? First, second, and third, and so on. So 
the students should justify or explain their responses. We have to, uh, uh, you, we have to uh, request them to do that. And then we must try to keep our questions positive but not pushy. So positive or neutral questions but not negative questions. Okay, we do not ask questions that promote random trial and error behavior. So we, we, we do not encourage guessing. You can try, uh, you can somehow use the information that I provided, but I, I don't like you to guess, I just plainly guess. And then the last thing that we would like to hear from our student is, I don't know. Uh, we, we have to tell them that, of course. When I call your name, uh, you can try answering the question, but uh, to, to tell me, plainly tell me or answer i don't know and then that's it that's the end uh of course being a teacher uh you should have to uh you have to you, you have to do something about that of course we don't tolerate that uh practice uh among our students okay so next listen carefully when you are uh, asking them some questions and they're giving you answers either those answers are right or wrong they are very important. Why? If they're wrong, then they somehow reflect the concept or the understanding, conceptual understanding of your students. And uh, you can actually use those as distractors once that you are doing or developing your uh, MCQs or your multiple choice questions. So that's it. Uh, because I'm thinking that if that student thinks that way, he or she has a... a he or, uh, he or she has this kind of or level of understanding, which is quite wrong. My, my task as a teacher is actually to correct that. So if that's, that wrong statement appears on the examination and still the student chooses that, uh, that's the, that wrong statement, then I might, uh, I, I might think na I am not effective in terms of changing that kind of behavior or conceptual understanding. Uh, on, uh, on that uh, specific student or particular student. So it's very important. So another thing is that it's really hard for us to think about uh, or to think of possible, uh, possible uh, choices or options for MCQs. So if, you're, if you will listen to your students, then you can somehow, uh, you can somehow solicit some uh, answers or possible answers or distractors. Okay, involve your students in decision-making, especially in creating rubrics because they, uh, they will also use that rubric. And let your students be creative. As long as they satisfy the requirements of the rubric, then uh, allow them to make their own presentation, uh, express, their, uh, express their ideas with creativity. Allow your students to present and discuss their outputs as often as possible. What I'm doing is sometimes, or there are some classes we're in, uh, some of the students, I allow them to present their uh, laboratory uh, results the laboratory reports and then while they're reporting i'm i'm doing some I, i'm getting some screen captures and then i'm putting it on a slide and then i put their results or their responses side by side okay so so that i can analyze the uh, the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the answers so sometimes there are some outliers so you have to explain to them why are they uh, why why are some data not coherent or consistent with the other groups so it is not to point out that they're wrong. It is just that we have to give some reason because we don't have to accept that right away. So that's it. So you involve your students in analyzing the errors and inconsistencies. For example, the group four presented some data which you think or it seems that it is really far from what group one, two, and three are presenting or have presented. So there might be a problem there. One, two, or one, two, and three might be wrong, and four is correct. Or otherwise, uh, being an outlier, more or less, the students in group four would think that they're wrong. So as a teacher, you should uh, you should facilitate the process now of looking for errors and analyzing, and then uh, you do it constructively. So that's that's another thing. So it's very important that when your students present, you are giving them feedback. Okay, you give them feedback. So what you did is correct. Uh, I think this one should be improved this way. Yeah, and so uh, needs timely uh, feedback in order for the students to, to gain this idea and correct their misconceptions at once. Do not hesitate to provide constructive. I'm not sure if this picture somehow illustrates or depicts a constructive criticism, but uh, of course we don't, we don't usually do this. 
I'm I'm doing it sometimes. Okay. So because it's not in the online class or we are in the online class right now. Yun, di ba? You can somehow edit the, the document uh, using your Microsoft Word or so, uh, sometimes PDF. You can put some comments there. Ayun. So but uh, during the uh, face-to-face, of course, we can demand our students to submit requirements like a research like this and then we can somehow scribble on those pages. Maximize the use of appropriate Sir, excuse me. Aside from that, may mga virtual labs naman tayo. So, yun yung uh, another ano nito, another thing that we have to uh, to consider. For example, Labster. So, some of you might have uh, used Labster before uh, or using Labster right now. And other simulations like PET, no? So, it's very important that uh, you process their ano muna, no? Parang you 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 direct their attention to what is uh, to what particular information are important when they deal with that simulation so it's not uh, enough that you you give them the uh, instruction or you you access this ano uh, simulation and then answer the following guide questions and that might not work well okay and then chem collective is also another thing so there are some institutions who, who uh, or which are using this and then, of course, uh, some of the other uh, applications and um, links that you see here in this uh, in our uh, no, no, in our uh, screen right now. So more of them, and uh, I think not all of them are uh, limited to science. Some of them are actually uh, like LMS, uh, like LMS or learning management systems, and so on. So marami pa yan. For example, in the Philippine Normal University, we're using Moodle. In, uh, I think, De La Salle, they're uh, using, ano naman sila, Canvas, yan, ang UST at uh, ay Blackboard. So, uh, different institutions would have different uh, learning management systems. And other uh, in, uh, informative websites and uh, resources that you could access on that. Yan. So, marami pa po yan. Now, uh, other things like design activities and experiments that are available uh, at home. So I tried to do this because I was uh, requested to handle uh, general biochemistry class. And uh, for us to, uh, uh, because in PNU, the laboratory course and the lecture course are just in one subject or taken as one. So uh, that's, that's it. Uh, of course, we really cannot uh, deliver this uh, or understand. Students will not, never understand uh, this the concept of biochemistry without doing some laboratory work. So I tried to design some activities and experiments for them to do at home simply because most of the biomolecules that we test naman in the lab are actually coming from food items and other stuff that you can get or that you see at home. So this is a picture of the manual that I, that I prepared and uh, in the onset of the term, we provided some measuring uh, measuring devices for the students. That's it. So uh, we have to uh, we have to uh, exert some effort on this, and of course some some uh, financial inputs to this. Uh, we provided uh, balance. Well, this is not one hundred percent in terms of calibration. This is not one hundred percent accurate, of course. But uh, this will somehow allow them to have some fair testings. Measurement of volumes, uh, it's very important because they have to uh, carry out some measurements and uh, repeat those measurements on trials or across trials. So these are some of the outputs of the students. They were able to, uh, to pre precipitate casein from, uh, from milk. Uh, this is a protein-based experiment. Uh, they were able to isolate starch from potato. They did this uh, at home and also some experiments on uh, osmosis. Uh, and uh, different kinds of solutions. So the, uh, this activity lasted one week, but uh, some of our students, when I, re when I read their reflection papers, uh, it is not only them who are interested in the result or the outcome. Sometimes their brothers, sisters, parents, they, all, they are also looking at the results. So that, that I think that's a good thing. 
uh, consider safety precautions. So, for example, experiments that are uh, that are related to lipids are uh, might cause some uh, production of noxious gases. So, uh, it's just a simulation. I, I did not allow them to uh, do the experiment at home. So let your students take charge of their own learning. So sometimes you have to give them some tasks that uh, allow them to decide on their own so that, uh, for example, they could reflect, uh, does this sound too harsh? Is my laboratory report enough? Uh, have I supplied the, the different information that is required? Uh, those are the things that we want them to develop, of course, because it, the teacher should, the teacher will never be there always to guide them and tell them this is enough, this is not. So allow them to uh, have some sort of self-reflection. Design activities that will foster collaboration and strengthen family relations. So very important. This is very important. When we are uh, suggesting some activities for students, sometimes we can also involve some family members. Example, theories uh, that are uh, important. No, For example, you must theories of evolution. Or yan, you just ask them the student ask the family members what do what do they know about it uh, what do they think about it do they believe those things so and then that could be a good input naman uh, to your uh, to your class no so that not to say or to judge whether those uh, inputs are right or wrong uh, but since uh, we would like to uh, develop uh, objectivity among our students, then you can allow them to uh, to solicit answers coming from their parents and family members. Okay, so significant others play an important role because they are the ones that so uh, that support or act as a support group to the students. It's very important. Now, uh, aside from that, another thing that I would like to emphasize here is uh, if you have an LMS, provide everything that they need uh, in terms of the reading, not not uh, that uh, feeding them too much. Uh, in terms of, of course, the students should uh, should be trained to learn or and uh, to think critically and analytically, but uh, to support that, you have to provide them the things that they need. So if you have an LMS or a module or whatsoever, you have to uh, give them some links and web resources. Uh, when uh, last term, I taught uh, Science Research 1 course in PNU, and uh, this is uh, a part of my, uh, my uh, LMS or learning management system page or systems page. So I provided them links that they could access. I'm not sure if they're using it, but I'm thinking that it would uh, it would just be there if they need it. So another thing, for example, science researches, bioinformatics, if they want to read about that, those are uh, given in the LMS. Uh, we have this bookshelf uh, where in the readings are present, supporting references and other applications. So I, I am providing it to, uh, to the students so that uh, they can somehow use it if they want. And if they have some other resources, then, then good. They could share it to the class. Try to automate tasks, of course, because we would like to make things easy. And aside from that, allow them to have some multiple attempts. Uh, I would recommend uh, to everyone that you watch this video. Uh, about, uh, this is uh, a TED Talk by uh, Mark Rober. So, uh, ito naman ang, ang title is The Super Mario Effect. No, The Super Mario Effect. So, he... Uh, he he mentioned there that uh, learning science is not actually a ano lang no, parang, parang one-time big-time event, of course. You have to uh, go through trial, a series of trial and error for you to successfully learn a concept. And uh, just watch this video. Uh, and uh, I really recommend this one for, uh, for everybody to watch, uh, especially those who are teaching science. Uh, so this is a, a, a very good uh, video. So I have here, and then uh, ask the uh, the students to mention the contributions of every member of the group. You are training them actually to uh to credit to whom credit is due. For example, uh, they are preparing a lab report. So who who did the proofreading? Who uh made or created the presentation? So that's very important. That's very important. You have to allow them or ask them to uh, enumerate what they did. Why? Because, of course, in the uh, actual setting, uh, in the scientific community, we're also doing that. When you are publishing, for example, you are you, you include the name of the authors, right? So that's it. So that's actually a practice. And, uh, of course, yun nga, giving the credit. Now, uh, who among you is familiar with this uh, news? Uh, 
let me just ano muna uh, um, give you some context the the deped right now is highly reliant on the use of modules uh, for uh, for their students and uh, they found out that there are some emerging facebook groups wherein the answer she, the answer sheets or answer keys on uh, about or of uh, of the modules no answer keys for the modules are uploaded and some other members like 60,000 of them or more are copying just copying the uh, the contents of those uh, answer keys yon so the, essentially it's cheating so i want you to uh, to watch this video first ngayong online ang klase nagkaroon na rin ng kopyahan online innovation <laughs> yeah totoo <laughs> nabisto na ang mga sagot sa modules Sineshare sa isang Facebook group na ang mga miyembro, mga estudyante. May mahigit 670,000 members ang FB page na online kopyahan. Ipinopost ng mga estudyante ang kanilang mga sagot sa iba't ibang subjects. May science, mathematics, English, music, pati PE o physical education. May nagsishare pa ng answer key. Humingi na raw ng tulong ang Department of Education para mapatanggal ang ganitong mga social media page. Minomonitor na rin daw ng NDI ang mga kaparehong Facebook groups. Pismayado naman ang ilang magulang sa pangungopya ng mga estudyante. Ikinaalarma lang naman ito ng ilang guro pero posible raw na nabibigitan ng mga estudyante sa kasalukuyang sistema ng edukasyon. So let's move fast here. So summarize the essential ideas and agreements before ending the online session. So it's very important. And remind your students and yourself to relax. Maybe, uh, is that applicable to everybody? Okay, so remind your students and yourself to relax. And the evaluation, I think uh, this will uh, this will be discussed naman next uh, next week by uh, Professor Pelgone. So I won't, uh, I won't uh, focus on this much. But uh, I would like to say that the evaluation must entail simple and fewer questions uh, that will require critical thinking. And I am thinking that sometimes uh, if the students can has this opportunity kasi to up, uh, download and uh, search for the answers in the internet, they will do that. So if you will uh, design an, ex uh, an exam, see to it that the examination that you do or that you give your students is unique. You did it or you, you constructed the test. Uh, it is not only downloaded or copied from the internet. So we can, you can actually do that. Okay, design activities that allow students to access and use available scientific data because there are so many softwares right now. Guide students in developing scientifically sound and informed decision for the problems that we have. And the main aim is for them to achieve their full potential. Lastly, if you are now teaching, what are we supposed to do? Number one, you have to read curated and reliable articles. So for example, uh, you are going to discuss something about proteins. There are so many researches that will tell you what are the common misconceptions of students about that topic. So somehow it will guide you in terms of uh, what are those misconceptions to watch out for. Share good practices and experiences to your co-teachers and collaborate with them in designing activities. That's also very important. Okay, so I think uh, that is the end of the, the discussion. We have already covered the five main points. Okay, and lastly, it's very important also that you post a question on a slide. So it's very, uh, why? Because sometimes if you say it and the internet connectivity is not that good, some of your students might miss the question. So it's better for you to post it here like now. Do you have a question? So thank you very much for listening and uh, that ends the presentation. All right. So, maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Sir Chris John Pastor. I'll be um, taking over the session. Um, uh, my name is JP Onya, and I'm also part of the Philsci Hub core team. And uh, ayun po, maraming maraming salamat po, Sir Chris John. And at this point, I think uh, our CEO and founder, Dr. Jeff Puntin, has some reminders to share. JP, could you share the screen for me from your end? Because I think you you have updated the, the file. Okay, yes. maraming maraming salamat po, Sir Chris Jans. And 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 by the way po, um, 
uh we have i think like more or less about like 400 live participants so that's combining yes. uh, our zoom uh audience and also our our youtube uh live streamer so again maraming maraming salamat po sir and congratulations for a very successful um uh training course. So okay, so ano lang po, quick reminder reminders lang po uh, about you know like uh, events that are uh, up and coming. So uh, today po we have uh, Professor Chris Jan Pastor um napaka napakaganda po ng content na deliver niya about uh, you know uh, strategies on how to effectively deliver, deliver virtual lectures. So uh, tomorrow naman po we have we will be featuring Mr. Chris Argamino from De La Salle University Center Center for Instrumentation. So uh, see si Sir uh, uh, Chris Argamino po will talk about uh, atomic and molecular spectroscopy for environmental uh, research. So kung makikita niyo po dyan sa right side ng slide na pinapakita namin, so Filipino Science Hub uh, recently collaborated with De La Salle University and this time around we have a webinar series which aims to introduce Filipino teachers and students to modern analytical methods. So lalong lalo na po sa mga nasa high school level na kumbaga may meron kayo mga uh, research projects and uh, hindi nyo alam ano pa yung mga applicable na modern analytical techniques so um, uh, attend this web uh, this series of talks so uh, again uh, this uh, first that is Sir Argamino he'll be followed by Dr. Jose Esmeria he'll talk about fundamentals of scanning electron microscopy that's on October 9th uh, and then November we have Dr. Virgilio Ebajo Jr. He'll talk about nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy for natural products research. Uh, December naman po, uh, maagang pamasko, we'll have Mr. Michael Arnante. He'll talk about multi-species uh, cytogenic analysis. And then we'll cap this webinar series um, by De La Salle University um, in January featuring a very good friend of ours and uh, actually a member of uh, Philsey Hub uh, leadership team, uh, Dr. Anna Karen Lacerna. So she'll talk about liquid chromatography, uh, instrumentation and applications in natural products research. But we don't, we don't, we, uh, hindi lang po tayo doon nag natatapos. So end of September po, um, uh, yung fourth installment na ating pedagogical training course featuring uh, Professor Alphonse, uh, JP, could you go back to, yeah, the, the, the previous one. Professor Alphonse Jason Pelgone, he'll uh, magshare naman po si Sir Alphonse sa inyo sa September 30th ng strategies kung paano po ba yung assessment, you know, lalong-lalo na ngayon sa panahon ng uh, new normal mode of teaching. Okay, um, sabi namin lagi, pinupunuin po namin ang mga kalendaryo ninyo. October, ito naman po yung events natin. So I mentioned... Um, Dr. Esmeria will be our first offering in, in October. And then on October 16th naman po, uh, we ha have Dr. Ted Novitsky. He is a scientist from PPG Industry. So it's the same company where uh, uh, Dr. Our, our dear Dr. Dindy Voiles is working for. And this time around, um, he will talk about the science of uh, protecting and beautifying the world with paints and coatings. So, um, lalo na dun sa mga um, gusto makaisip ng mga research topics or, you know, like those who would like to learn more about what it's like to work for the paints and coating um, industry. So, ito, this is a one, this is like a very rare opportunity for us to be graced by one of the world's leading experts in this area. So, uh, that's on October 16th. Um, October 23rd naman po is actually one of our very first mathematics webinars. So we'll be uh, having Dr. Neil Egar Egargin from the Institute of Mathematical Sciences and Physics from the University of the Philippines in Los Baños. And he'll talk about maths in action. So controlling sound and electromagnetic waves. So ito, application naman po ito ng math. Ano. And then last but not the least, um, on October 30th, we will be graced by uh, Dr. Adelit Carrasco and, you know, uh, Philsey Hub's Vice President and Head of Philsey Hub Research University, Mr. J.P. Onya. They'll talk about uh, fundamentals of research. So, ito po ang, ang pinakahuli nating offering dito sa FUSE, PNU, and Philsey Hub uh, 
teaching um teacher training um series first first time education so yun po um napakarami pong mga magaganap uh, um in, in the coming month so yun po if uh, for more information po just visit our facebook page po and then po sa pinned post Uh, yung pong lahat ng links para maka-register sa mga events na to and if, if you find it quite challenging to navigate our Facebook page you can also visit us at www.felsaihub.com nandun po sa aming uh, website ang uh, lahat ng links para po kayo makapag-participate dito and uh, as we said po lahat ng itong webinars na ito ay for free so ayun po okay uh, JP okay so thank you Doc Jeff and uh, as you mentioned um, we are Uh, we are joined by almost 400 participants, yep. uh, 300 here on Zoom and almost 100 in YouTube. Yep. And we would just like to acknowledge um, the presence of our um, valued stakeholders. So uh, our uh, team PNU is uh, present in the room. I think uh, Mam Sheila, I saw Mam Sheila and uh, Sir ER Palomar uh, earlier. And I think uh, Sir Pel Pelgone is also our Uh, speaker next week will be uh, is also present in, in the. I, in the I think room. we might also have some uh, members of the foundation of the upgrading. Yes, Elvira Galvez, the audience. So, um, sa mga uh, kasamahan po natin sa Fuse at saka sa PNU, uh, maraming maraming salamat po for tuning in. Yeah. Elvira Galvez, hello po. Yeah. Ayan. So, uh, we probably could head on to the. Uh, question and answer. I hope Sir Chris John is uh, already ready for the uh, questions. And uh, ayun po. We could start with uh, Mel Joan Dison, uh, uh, a question from Zoom. Sir, how can we improve the skills of our students who are currently enrolled in biology and chemistry subjects where the laboratory equipment is out of their reach? How can we improvise? And okay, so I think that's a that's a good question. So a, a while ago, I presented some of the examples, like uh, for example, in biochemistry, we can we can uh, use household materials, but uh, you really have to uh, consider the safety, uh, the uh, the maturity or the grade level uh, of those students who whom you would uh, request uh, those. Uh, or to do those experiments. Now, for example, uh, one thing is, uh, I think uh, one thing is very important. If, uh, if the teacher knows his or her content and the teacher is actually experienced in terms of uh, teaching the subject, uh, he or she can design an experiment and, or improvise a certain uh, form of an experiment for the students to, uh, to do. And those experiments should not be very complicated. Sometimes uh, some, uh, very, uh, very simple experiment. For example, uh, with the, 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 the coin and when you, uh, when you have the coin and then you drop some water in it. Uh, that's, a, that's a good representation uh, for, or a visualization for how strong intermolecular forces like hydrogen bonds are, right? And then it, well, I think uh, because we have a limit, we have limited, uh, resources right now and of course uh, our students cannot perform those experiments is especially uh, the ones that uh, for example just like the level that we're doing in the lab uh, the facilitation of the teacher would uh, really help them for example uh, you you just allow them to to do or to perform a certain part of the experiment and then from there their observations you will uh, you will process so that's it Aside from that, you can also look for uh, some simulations, simulations. But uh, of course, the limitation of that is the skill, uh, manip the manipulative skills of students. Uh, we really can't, there's no guarantee that they that they will uh, know, that they will develop those skills. So that's it. Ayun po. So earlier we have uh, shared the uh, Labster uh, com for uh, virtual uh, uh, simulations. And we have also yeah. uh, had um, a course here on uh, uh, on the teacher training program about uh, virtual labs. So kindly check that out. That is uh, delivered delivered by uh, Prof. May John Aguila, um, Sir Chester Dabalos, and Marty Mateo, uh, members of the Tilsai Hub team. And I ha I have um, a raised hand here from Nonaline de, de La Paz Santos. Uh, Ma'am Nonaline, probably you can uh, unmute. And if you if you have any questions or comments, kindly share them to us. Good afternoon. 
Ma'am Donaline? Okay. I think Ma'am Donaline still uh, getting ready. So we could probably head on to uh, a question from uh, Ms. Eileen De Roya. Um, what laboratory activity should be given to analytical chemistry? So I think uh, analytical chem teacher to say si Ma'am uh, Eileen De Roya. So for, for analytical chemistry, ano ba yung mga, ano, yung mga common? For example, yung mga spectroscopy, mga ganyan, mm -hmm. di ba? Or, oh, so... Uh, with uh, parang as to regards to that some most of them are colorimetric there are some apps that could uh, somehow ano eh, parang analyze yung uh, extent or parang intensity of colors i think uh, i would share it to them if i i could find some uh, i i'm sure that there are uh, some of the applications like that you 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 use your phone to uh, take a picture of the solution that you created and then uh, the intensity of the color you can somehow make some or get some data out of it and then you use that data. Uh, aside from that, for analytical chemistry, if it is not uh, something that you could really perform, there are so many. Uh, for example, Lobster has some dedicated yeah. activity for analytical chemistry. Uh, Chem Collective has so many ex uh, experiments for related to analytical chemistry. Chem Collective. Yep. And, um, and Colorado. Po. Yeah. Yeah. In the whole, uh, yeah, the, the FET simulation, you can also use that. It depends on the grade level, right? So sometimes uh, if they are majors, uh, maybe the, the, the FET would be uh, quite easy, but uh, for Chem Collective, that would suit their, their, uh, the purpose of uh, teaching them or introducing analytical chemistry. Uh, well, because uh, as compared to biochemistry, wherein we are relying more on color changes, qualitative, uh, yeah, qualitative. So we can just send those kits at home and do it. Mm -hmm. For analytical, kasi it's more of ano, diba, measurement. Apo. So, actually, yeah. so, and because of that, ayan, so I would prefer that, uh, I would recommend that you uh, explore uh, simulations. You know? mm -hmm. And then what, what I'm thinking is something like this. Eh? Uh, even if you use different sim, uh, simulations, what is more important is the processing of the answers. So, for example, you ask your, uh, from, from the inputs or from the results that you get from or from the students get from the simulation, they will use those as inputs for equations. They compute for something. They make sense out of those equations and answers. So the, the main role of the teacher now is uh, how did you get, how did you arrive to that answer? Mm -hmm. So what gives you, uh, are you really confident that, uh, that, that, that the way you computed or calculated that answer is correct? So uh, if there are some students who presented the same answer but different solution, so how will you now address that problem? So, mm -hmm. or that, so that's, that's more important. And I think, uh, for, for example, for high school students, when they see the teacher, how the teacher processes the, 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 the answers, they also acquire the same skill. So yeah. when they put some that same problem, for example, they were presented with different data. So they know that, oh, my teacher uh, did this. Eh. Parang he compared the different ways on how they were calculated. Uh, maybe he looked at the signs uh, and so, so, so on and so forth. So the students can somehow acquire other skills rather than manipulating uh, analysis of data, reporting of data. So th those are very important scientific skills as well. Mm -hmm. Kaya talagang kailangan po yung skills natin as uh, instructors are uh, very sound kasi kay tayo talaga yung kokopyahin, yung thought processes natin. Yung How you process information, it's very important. Yep. Uh, sometimes if you, you, may, you may even observe that the way you ask questions affect the way your students also think and ask questions. Yep. So... Sometimes it's it's really some ano eh, parang I observe that uh, among the students. So when when they recognize that ah si sir itong hinahanap pagka sa nagpe-present kami ito yung mga tinitingnan niya. They will prepare for that and then they will be surprised the next time that they prepared for that you're looking for another thing. And then they develop this sort of ah I have to prepare everything. I have to prepare everything because uh, sir or ma'am can actually look at different uh, ano can attack different uh, from different angles from from anywhere then ask you questions so i think that's that's a good ano rin ano parang a good input to everybody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep so next up 
is a question from uh, Alfonso Kawilan Jr. Um, now that we've, uh, we're online, we find it hard to look for supplies and lab activities and how can we maximize uh, the materials at home. So, ayan, ito na naman, yung mga <laughs> lab at home, booths, yeah, but, and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, another thing I would just add uh, to the points that I raised a while ago. So you 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 now have or you already identified an experiment. It, there are times that you can also reuse those ano eh, those uh, resources. Pero you can make another experiment out of it. Di ba may ganun tayong ano? Mm -hmm. May mga experiment eh. So you you can actually ano no, you can actually consider uh, designing other experiments using Almost the same materials. Yep. Yan. For example, you have a potato. Potato has enzymes in it. O, lagyan mo ng hydrogen peroxide yan, nagbabubble yan. Yung potato, pwede mo rin siyang gamitin for extraction of starch sa carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. Yung mga ganun, uh, yung, yung potato, yung, yung intensity ng color ng potato when it reacts with starch, pwede mo siya ngayon gamitin naman as an input for another like concentration Diba? Nang, nang starch in a certain sample. Something like that. Eh. So, mm -hmm. uh, coming from just one set of material, oh, you, can, you can think of so many things. So, uh, I think, oh, yun nga lang, we are limited talaga with, uh, with respect to the, ano, uh, of the materials like measuring instruments. Kaya kami, uh, when I was, uh, ano, I was uh, tasked to handle biochem, Talagang ano, nag-invest kami sa, for example, yun, to send uh, weighing scales to our students. So, oh, glad... Oh, yun eh. Saan niyo po nabili yun, sir? Yung parang uh, portable na ano? <laughs> oh, Naglasada lang ako. Mm -hmm. Buwin na sa Lasada. Kasi parang uh -huh. ang, ang point is, ano eh, the point is, oh, sige, hindi naman calibrated talaga yan. Mm -hmm. Pero, at least they have some numbers to look at. Yeah. And when... They want to repeat that, they can somehow use that equipment. So, the agreement is, uh, it, you will return that in, a, in good condition. Okay. So the next batch will also use that. So, aside from that, the, the measuring cups for volume, so we don't have, they don't have beakers at home. They don't have graduated cylinders. So, they just have, and then, uh, when, I, uh, when I prepared their lab manual, I just used the, you know, the, 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 uh, the volume measurements of those measuring cups so that they will mm -hmm. not so three-fourths uh, three na cup or one-fourth mm -hmm. na cup. Yun. Kinoconvert ko lahat so that they can also follow through. Ayun. Ayun talaga. We just make make <laughs> the most out of what we have. Yeah, that's the yeah. only thing we can do uh, for, now, yeah. for now. Okay. So, uh, this is now a question from uh, Maria Natividad, Clara Abbas. And uh, how relevant are the learning styles in virtual learning? Actually, ano to, di ba? Parang uh, when you are looking at, well, in education per se, there are so many uh, con conflicting ideas about learning styles. Mm -hmm. okay. So parang ganun eh. Parang what we know is, of course, some, most of us are visual, some of us are auditory, but... If you're going to consider, the more stimuli, the, the more senses that you, ano kasi, that that you involve in learning the more optimum the learning becomes di ba mm -hmm. ang problem lang natin ngayon is uh, dahil na ito katulad nito it's it's just uh, ano lang uh, parang video you you just watch mm -hmm. your or something like that limited. so we are limited to that so well if you believe that learning styles are important for learning then there's no problem with that if you don't believe okay lang din naman na parang para sa akin kasi parang the more senses that you ano kasi that that you ano parang include in the instruction or involved in the instruction and ano for example sa atin nga so why do we why do we even mind to to create experiments kasi it's not only enough or na, it's not enough that they read something they listen to you they watch mm -hmm. something in YouTube then they will believe di ba so you, sometimes there are some experiment, uh, some activities, DIY experiments in YouTube, then or or in Facebook. When you repeat that, they will not give you the same result, diba? Mm -hmm. So, but uh, in in our case, we would like to, I uh, know, to them to verify it through an experiment. So that's it. So 
Kasi you want them to manipulate things eh, para mas maraming senses na involved and then the learning will become more ano, uh, parang enhanced. So that's what we want. Well, kung learning nagbabalit din sa learning style, then sige, dun siya. <laughs> dun, dun natin siya i-account. Ano, okay lang din naman. All right. So another question from uh, Mel Joan Dison. Hello. How can we improve the engagement of uh, students who find chemistry subject as their weakness or probably um, any other subject uh, na parang medyo ma- mahina ang tingin nila sa sarili nila? Engagement po. Okay. Number one is confidence building. Do not give them problems that they really cannot, uh, but that they cannot solve right away. That's that's something that you have to. For example, there is a there is a, a study conducted by PNU in partnership with PBED, looking at the educational pipeline, STEM pipeline in the Philippines. Uh, among the when we ask the uh, the the students, high school students, college students. Among the different sciences and uh, chemistry sciences, ano ang pinakaayaw mo? Actually, chemistry ang ayaw nila. Uh, bakit? When we ask the reason, the primary reason is that there's their teacher uh, requested or asked them to memorize the elements in the periodic table. Mm-hmm. Ayun, without further ano, <laughs> without further, further ano na yon, parang follow up, wala na talaga. Okay? So ganoon lang ang nangyari. Uh, ang naaalala lang nila ay bonding. Mm-hmm. O, kasi siguro, kaya naisip nila yung bonding with friends. Yun, ganun. So, ngayon, kung weakness ng bata yung chemistry, ang tanong kasi doon ay bakit. Okay? So, one thing that we find out is, of course, since konti ang majors natin ng chemistry, konti lang din talaga yung makakapagpaintindi ng chemistry sa kanila. Sa paraan na kailangan nila yung maintindihan. Okay? So, another thing is that Uh, when you give them some tasks, yun nga yung scaffolding. This is very important. So parang, wag mo silang bigyan ng sobrang ano, complicated formula. Kung yung simple example naman, they can still learn the lesson. And then that's the time that when they have the confidence to do it, then you give them uh, the, the more difficult uh, ano, the more difficult tasks to do. Uh, ano, ano pa ba? Ang problem natin sa chemistry kasi, meron siyang tatlong components. Di ba? When you learn chemistry, There are things that are, for example, rusting. Well, what you see is rust. That's macroscopic. Pero for us, sa chemistry kasi, meron siyang symbolic na part. And that is the equation. Tapos yung equation na yun, nagre-represent siya ng sub-microscopic na part, which is what the concept behind your, your ano na lang to, idea mo lang yun eh. Atoms, hindi mo nakita yun eh. Pinaniwalaan mo lang siya. Right? So, those three, the inter the interfacing of those three is very important so the teacher should also be able to ano to communicate that to students that for example chemistry why is it hard what you see should be represented or symbolically and those symbols require some understanding of a certain concept behind it and that is mm-hmm. ano understanding of abstract concepts of atoms molecules bonding energy whatsoever so uh, mahirap sa mga bata Uh, hindi ko sinasabing madali ang bio. Pero kasi ang bio, napaka-visual, napaka-visible kasi niya. Yeah. Not unless organisms, di ba? O sa atin, wala tayong ganun. So, that's it. And then, ang problem, lastly, ang problem ng chemistry kasi ay when they miss the essential uh, information, wala na. Hindi na nila yon masusundan. So, halimbawa, uh, nag-fail sila dun sa, halimbawa, absent sila no, when you discuss nomenclature. Absent sila. Ayan na, dire-diretso na yan. Kasi, oh, compounds, when they do it in the lab, when when you give them some problems to solve, eh, you can, you you ask them to balance equation. Lahat yon all of those depend on that very single idea, which is knowing how to name Mm-hmm. di ba? tapos yung naming na yon, meron pa siyang prerequisite that is understanding metal ba siya o non metal. Mm-hmm. so if, if if they miss those very simple ideas, wala na sila sa mga susunod. that's 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 really ano, that's really crucial. Uh, well, that's what I observe when I when I uh, conduct some classes. Mm-hmm. kaya sila hirap sa chemistry. ayan. so yun mm-hmm. po ang key takeaway natin kay Sir Christian, uh, confidence building. Uh, 
uh, in terms of uh, chemistry subject at kung ano pa pong mga ibang subjects na our students are finding it hard to understand. Yun po. Okay. And then another question, how often should we ask for students' feedback? So, uh, kailangan po ba? Is it necessary to include it at the end of uh, the module or vir virtual lecture or isahan na lang? I think uh, maganda to pagka ano, ano ba ako, akong ginagawa ko dito, di ba I develop the module. The module will never be perfect. What you did, you, you did that uh, parang ano, parang atwa, yung parang dahil lang kailangan niya eh, at the moment you need that module. Of course, that will never be perfect. That's why you have to, ano, you have to uh, entertain evaluation. evaluation. Yon. Ang ginagawa ko dyan, dalawa lang ang tanong ko. Anong part ng activity ka nahirapan? At anong part ng activity yung pinaka nagustuhan mo? Ay, may pangatlo pala. Meron kang isasuggest para mapaganda ko yung activity na to. What will you suggest? So that, next time, ma-improve ko yung, ano, yung module. Uh, ano siya eh, um, uh, For example, some of our students right now are in the provinces. So I suggested potato. Doon sila mag-extract ng carbohydrates, ng starch. Eh baka meron silang local na ano doon, na product doon. So they could suggest. And then uh, when I develop the module the second time around, then on the next round, then, then kasama na siya doon. So may contextualization ka na nakasama. Mm -hmm. So that works both ways. Ayun. Ang ganda nun. Okay. Uh, next question from Miss Eileen Beroya. Uh, Sir, how can we be sure that the activities submitted by the students are really their own work? Ayan, nandito na tayo sa online kopyahan. Okay. Na tayo. Uh, mm -hmm. Number one, how, how unique ba yung answers sa gusto mo? Okay. Nam Kasi ganito eh, parang we have to accept the fact that right now, our students would really like to pass your subject. Kaya lang, Marami silang limitations, di ba? Mm -hmm. so ngayon, pag binigyan mo sila ng mahirap na exam, ano ba mangyayari dyan? Malamang, magkokopyahan yan. Magko mm -hmm. At ang tawag nila doon, legally, ay collaboration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yun na lang yun eh. Para, oh, let's collaborate. Ang ibig sabihin nun, magkopyahan. Collab, mm -hmm. collab di ba? Pero, collab, eh. Pero para sa atin kasi, kung ano medyo ano tayo sa traditional din ang ating pagtingin, that's ano eh, that's, that's cheating. No, that's, that's not originally yours. So, ako, ang take ko dito is uh, you just give them some tasks, allow them to work together, but see to it that uh, everybody's working by asking them their contribution of each. Ganun na lang. Mm -hmm. Kasi in the long run, uh, ano ba ang gusto natin? Uh, we are after learning. Mm -hmm. So if they, if they ask the help of other classmates and they learn something out of that process, then that's okay. O kasi wala, gano'n na talaga siya eh. Parang, I'm not saying na hopeless na tayo sa gan on that on that front. But, mm -hmm. uh, of course, we we have to be realistic. Oh, kesa magalit ka every time. Mm -hmm. Parang, oh, this, this, quest, uh, this answer to the question is all is the same with this one and the other and the other. Eh, why not group them na lang? Oh, tapos, bigyan mo sila ng mas mahirap na exam. Mm -hmm. Yun talagang mag-iisip ka. And then, that's it. Di ba? Oh, they learn, uh, they, they collaborated, they learned in the process. Kaya po, mas mahirap gumawa ngayon ng assessment. O, si, si Sir Alphonse na mag-discuss niya next uh, time. Next week. Uh -huh. ah, oh, hindi na pwede yung, ano, yung parang ano-ano na lang. Yung, you, you just choose among the letters. Uh, mm -hmm. It won't work that way now. So you just have to just, you just give them uh, a certain situation. Ganun, ano? Tapos yung, that they, will, that they will be triggered talaga to think. Work together. Para hi, kasi yung own work, sometimes even the parents are answering the modules. Mm -hmm. Now, the question, how will you now reprimand those parents? Hindi din naman natin kaya. Mm -hmm. ba diba? O yun. So, yun lang. Authenticity siguro. Well, depende. Higher forms of education, nag-ano sila, di ba? Require sila ng open video. Mm -hmm. Ano Comprehensive pero you cannot do that all the time. Mm -hmm. So you just decide the way na will suit our situation right now. Ayun. Tsaka tama nga po yung sinabi ni Sir Chris dyan na parang we have to go back on on why on the why. Why they are doing like um, they are cheating or submitting uh, work that is not their own. So ayun, magandang pag-isipan po natin kung kailangan natin reconfigure yung ano, mga activities natin para ma- mas madali na 
parang ma-process ng mga estudyante. Ayan. Credit in na ngayon, di ba? So some of the, stu- the schools, meron silang anti-plagiarism. Yung mga plagiarism detecting ng mga softwares and programs. Yeah. So they allow, they they ask the students to submit it to turn it in first before submitting it to the professor. Mm. They're doing that. So sabi, oh, dapat ang similarity mo less than 10%. Mm-hmm. So wag mong i-submit basta ano kasi higher than 10%, ang dami mo nang kinopya. Mm-hmm. Something like that. So that's another way to ano to ensure but So ibig bang sabihin nun, kung walang kung walang percent similarity hindi rin siya kinopya. Malay mo sa mga old old kasi na journals natin sa Or science. Libro. Mm-hmm. Mga libro, 'di ba? Pictures mm-hmm. lang. Oh, hindi nakikita masyado ng ganung software. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> what can we say? Ayun. So ganun lang. Napakahirap talaga din po ng assessment nowadays. Ayun, <laughs> kaya nako, abangan niyo po yung kay Sir Pelgone. Mhm. <laughs> I will address that. Can the results of these studies be regarded as reliable? Yeah, this is, a, this is a question from YouTube, from uh, Jomar Carpena. Uh, how, can the results of these studies regarded... Ah, siguro po kasi may mga... Uh, pinost po kayo kanina ng mga journal articles, no? Uh, mm-hmm. Kung applicable din po ba daw sa context ng uh, remote learning? Yeah, I believe so. For example, yung, ano, yung greeting your students. Eh, kahit naman ikaw, i-greet kita... Diba? Mm-hmm. Eh, dun sa, oh, sige, let's start. Ganyan. Oh, nako, one hour lang tayo magkikita. Uh, ano lang tayo, ah, bilisan natin, bilisan natin. Mm-hmm. Yung atmosphere na ginawa mo sa bata, talagang oh, everybody will be in a hurry and uh, they will not, ano, diba, enjoy the class. So parang that is setting the tone kasi na, oh, mag, magkaklase na, ha. So yung mga, mm-hmm. yung mga unexpected figures na ano mo rin eh. So if it is true in the face-to-face, true rin yan sa online. Siguro on a certain extent, makaiba sila. Pero it's generally true. So yung ganon, we can use that. Actually, that's a good area for research. Diba? Yeah. Uh, nagawa sa face-to-face yun eh. Uh, ngayon, yung mga nag-graduate studies sa atin, you can, you can actually see that as an opportunity. Ganon pa rin ba ngayon? Kasi those are just information that we need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kaya sa... talagang ano, there's a wealth of data right now na pwede mm-hmm. nating uh, pag-aralan. Yeah. Yep. All right. So from Ab- Abigail Joy Mejia, uh, many students are uh, ito po ano lang siya, um uh, general comment. Many students are aren't happy taking online classes due to financial problems and then there's still professors being inconsiderate. No offense, sabi. Pero ano, no, no disclaim. Mm-hmm. Oo, yeah. uh, kasi ganito, oh, sige, so ganito na lang. Uh, most of us are actually teaching. Some of us are ano pa lang, uh, getting through the process kasi nag, you're in your undergraduate, o baka nasa graduate school ka. Ano, tapos syempre doon, mas hindi matanggap ng prof mo na may internet, may problem ka pa rin sa connectivity. So, kasi sinasabi nila, may work ka na kasi. So dapat meron ka ng ano, gadget or whatsoever. Pero ano ah, parang ako... Kung ikaw yung estudyante, you are the recipient of that kind of treatment. Uh, well, number one, you you should communicate to your to your teacher. Kasi minsan yung inaasyo mo na dapat alam niya, di ba? That's that's mm-hmm. something you have to open up. Kasi parang oh sir, hindi ko po talaga kaya. And I don't think that a uh, teacher will the teacher will treat you badly naman or harshly. Eh. Parang Maybe they're assuming that everybody is capable not until someone tells them na hindi niya kaya, exactly. di ba? So, pero ikaw, huwag kang mag, huwag mang tuldukan 'yon. Huwag kang mag-assume na hangga't wala kang ginawa. So, you have to tell them. Ngayon, kung you were ano pa rin, uh, tawag dito, uh, iba pa rin yung treatment sa you after that. Ayun lang, hindi ko na alam ang next move mo. Ano, uh, oh, yeah. na sa auto. Uh, another is, ah, uh, ito nga no pagka may o oh, yun naman mga professors na sa atin o teacher na ngayon alam naman natin yan that uh, this is a very challenging time for everybody so yun lang hindi we are not used to ano kasi eh parang not seeing our students in the class di ba kaya sometimes sad talaga it's you you feel sad if nobody shows up in your synchronous session mm-hmm. kasi wala kang kausap you prepared for it and yeah. yet nobody up, di ba? 
Pero sometimes kasi we really have to ano to accept that idea or fact na maybe there is a limitation talaga financially sa students. So what can you do? Eh di you just limit your synchronous but see to it that you communicate it to them. Minsan lang tayo magkikita in a month, twice lang. Better be there. ba? Diba? Kesa naman, you're suffering ng four times, in-expect mo eight times, nandun sila dapat, tas walang nagsishow dun sa iyong session. O, di bawasan mo, you copy di ba? And and siguro sir, mm-hmm. on the context lang po no of yung mga yung perspective ng teacher kung gaano ba ka-understanding tayo dapat. So siguro po kung makakapag-share lang din kami ng experience namin. Um I'm based here in the US and uh for about a year uh we worked from home. So yung dynamic sa bahay, yung yung routine mo nagbabago yan. So um siguro po i-take into consideration natin yan lalong-lalo na po sa mga estudyante natin no na nandoon sila sa bahay nila, wala po sila doon sa natural environment nila para maging kasing engaged sila, nagbabago po yung routine kasi may mga kasama sa bahay. So siguro po dagdagan pa din po kumbaga mas iba yung pasensya po ngayon kasi there's a lot more factors Uh, that could be influencing yung abilidad ng ating mga estudyante na ma- ma- mag- maging engage at maka-keep up po sa kumbaga sa expectations ng mga guro. So siguro po ito po yung pagkakataon na kailangan nating stretch po ang ating compassion. Kri, <laughs> uh, alam nyo ba, sometimes ito ay share ko lang din kasi uh, most of us are teachers. I'm not sure if I have some students out there. No? Baka may student ako dyan. <laughs> Kapag kami uh, nag-open ng mic, Hindi ako la, hindi ako nakikinig actually madalas doon sa yung sa sinasabi ng estudyante. Nakikinig ako doon sa environment, ano meron sa bahay. Mm-hmm. When they open their videos, tinitingnan ko, kamusta kaya siya? Kasi you that's that's the way ano kasi that's that, that's one way for you to feel what's happening. And then ikaw kaya ilagay doon. Tuturo ka may mga batang, di ba? May mga kapatid na umiiyak diyan, naglalaro. Minsan nga yung ano eh, yung sisigaw, kumain ka na ba? Ganun no, di ba? Nagkaklase kayo. Tapos nag-unmute siya ng mic. Kumain ka na ba? Sinasawa yung nanay. Kasi nga, nahihiya siya na may maingay. Mm-hmm. Pero ah, also may nanay palang concern sa kanya. That's good. ba diba? mm-hmm. So at least, you see what's happening. Kaya maganda rin nagtatawag-tawag kayo. Hindi ko naman sinabing you investigate what, kung ano nasa bahay nila. Hindi naman ganun. No? But you listen. Kasi hindi lang dun sa response. Ano yung meron sa bahay? Maingay ba dun? Minsan makarin ka manok. Magulat ka. Nasaan ka ba? Mm-hmm. Nasa field. Kasi wala siyang internet connectivity, nandun siya sa field. ba diba? that, that somehow tells you, ganun ka gusto nung batang umaten sa klase mo. Opo. Diba? Ganun, siya, ganun ka kakahalaga sa kanya. So, yung, yung idea na ganun, that somehow you have to, ano, you have to, to value that. Yep. And, a, and also, sir, if one thing ito kasi, ba diba, okay, nakaka-adjust na siguro after almost two years, quite unfortunately, na humaha, to, talaga nagtatagal tong pandemic. So, Um, ang isa pa rin po sigurong dapat natin pagandaan is when we go back dun sa normal. ba? Diba? Kasi may adjustment period na naman po yan. Kami po, pinabalik kami sa trabaho kasi antaas na ng vaccination rate dito. Pero nakita din po namin, kahit yung mga nagtatrabaho na, yung working professionals, they struggle going back to the usual routine. Hindi po kasi diba? bigo yung isa hanggang dalawang taon. na nabago ang 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 environment mo sa pagkatuto. So yung konsepto ng metacognition for example. So yun po eh, ito po mga bata ito, ano? oh, eh ano? kayo nga ang mga guro po I know for sure pag bumalik sa face to face maninibago rin. So ito po siguro um, um medyo medyo na hijack yung discussion po into this pero kasi yung po talagang pasensya at pag-unawa ay mahalaga sa panahon ngayon. All right. So that's a very good point. Ah, uh, ayan. Parang ito naman, comment lang din from Miss Mel uh, Joan Dison. Ah, uh, in my case, I condition my students that every transaction is online. However, attending uh, lectures via Google Meet or Zoom uh, should be voluntary and not compulsory due to financial problems and connectivity problems. And anyway, I provided modules and course packs for them uh, to to read so that they can learn at their own pace. So Ayan, talagang uh, kita natin yung consideration na binibigay ng mga uh, teachers sa ating mga estudyante. Ayan, so another question from uh, Sir Alfonso Kawilan during uh, ODL. What is ODL? 
Any, t- any tips for making our own lab activity? So, ayan, nasagot na po yan ni eh, Sir, uh, Sir Chris Dan. Ayan. Hindi ko po alam yung... Oh, yeah, yung... Yeah. <laughs> Baka kasi ano... Online distance learning. Online distance learning. I don't know. <laughs> best guess. Best uh, guess. Best. Ano man mag-fit dyan. Ayan. Parang ganun. Anyway, oh, oh yun. We are ready, I think. No? Basta safety yeah. lang po. Uh, may mga kapatid sa bahay. Baka kainin yung mga chemicals yeah. na. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, safety, and safety. actually, part nung neto pong teacher training series na to, yung how to design virtual and you know essentially laboratory experiments. So check out nyo po yun. Kasi... We uh, gave specific examples dun po sa tatlong um, foundation STEM areas, namely biology, chemistry, and physics. So, hinimay po dun ng ating mga speakers kung ano ba yung mga considerations uh, when it comes to designing um, uh, laboratory ayan experiments po. and yung virtual lab. So, ayan. ayan. So, this is course number three of the STEM teaching program. Ayan Nasa po. website po namin. This is on our website. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, on that note, So, uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa mga nagtanong ng questions. And of course, uh, thank you, Sir Christian Pastor, for um, really uh, sharing your very insightful answers. Uh, ayan, maraming maraming salamat po. And uh, I think at this point, we can, we can already wrap up the discussion. Yep. And uh, I'm going to share the the link for the uh, uh, certificates. Ayan po. So, uh, reminder lang po sa ating uh, lahat na... Uh, kindly check and double check po our um, uh, yung pag uh, answer po natin sa mga uh, forms kasi nagba bounce back po pag mali yung uh, email, email address. address. Yeah. yeah. And then also ano po be mindful po sa spelling ng inyong mga pangalan kasi since we're using an automate, uh, automated um, g- certificate generation system, kung mali po ang spelling ng inyong ipinasok, yun lang din po ang isispit out niya. So, hindi po namin check yan ng isa-isa. Um, and then secondly po, um, uh, certificates are issued in batches. So, um, meron po tayo ngayong more or less 400 live participants po and may mga hahabol pa po dyan dun sa asynchronous na pag-take nitong course na to. So, medyo uh, please have patience po, bear with us po. So, if siguro po more than 10 days hindi nyo pa po makuha yung certificate nyo sa kanya po kami i-follow up. Yun po. So, ayan. So, na-share ko na po sa uh, chat box yung uh, link for the Google Form. And, uh, ayun po. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa pag- uh, Pag-join nyo sa amin, uh, alauna na po sa Pilipinas. Yeah, no, And uh, uh, we're time. very sorry po kung uh, uh, na-invade namin ng inyong lunchtime. Uh, and I hope you you learned a thing or two. Marami kaming na, natutunan kahit po kami sa, sa Philosophy of Guys or Christian Pastor kasi uh, practicing uh, biochemist din po si Sir. So, ayan, nakaka-relate tayo sa mga uh, sinabi niya kanina. And ang sobrang uh, observe po namin over the past, uh, you know, six webinars, including this, sobrang engaged po ang ating mga guro. So, exactly. yun po, ito naman pong nakikita namin hunger ninyo for, you know, for continuous, uh, continuing uh, improvement sa inyong, sa inyong profession. Uh, ito po talaga yung nag-fuel fuel up sa organizations like Philsci Hub, like PNU and Fuse, para po mag-deliver kami ng mga ganitong mga programa. So, yun po, maraming maraming salamat po ulit sa inyo. So, Uh, ayun po, um, siguro po, um, so, so, so we're gonna be ending this soon, mag-ingat po kayo palagi, and then siguro JP, we're gonna invite Sir Chris John sa ano, debriefing. Yep. yep. So ayun, ayun po, po uh, I've already shared and kindly um, uh, confirm lang po if the if the link is working, I, I see already some some responses. So uh, kung hindi nyo po ma-access uh, at this point, uh, kindly check po yung recorded videos sa YouTube, we will also share them on the website. Uh, and then po sa video description. Yep, yep. Uh, so again, tomorrow po, we have uh, the very first a uh, webinar from the De La Salle University and Philsci Hub collaboration. So, uh, mm-hmm. Chris Argamino again, Atomic and Molecular Spectroscopy for Environmental Research. So, check that out. And then yun po, um uh, final installment ng pedagogical training courses September 30th with Professor Al- Alphonse Jason Pelgone from PNU. So it's on STEM teaching assessment strategies. Maraming maraming salamat po ulit sa inyo.
Thank you and uh, happy Friday, happy weekend, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Maraming salamat po. Ingat po. Thank you and mag-ingat po tayo lagi. Thanks everyone.